your sports, your team, your heroes. And the Giants have won it all. Chelsea have won the Champions League. The Shawinigan Cataracts are champions. The mayor of Hitchtown is now an IndyCar Series winner. Sportsnet, fueled by champions. This week on Friday Night Hockey, the 2013 edition of the London Knights seemed like a team on a mission destined to avenge their overtime loss at the 2012 MasterCard Memorial Cup. What an effort by the London Knights. They'll be a force in the Ontario Hockey League again next season. Plymouth has been the latest victims in the Knights' march to try and win a second straight Ontario Hockey League championship. Tom Wilson and the Whalers have put up a good fight through the first four games, but find themselves with their backs against the wall tonight. Down three games to one. London, Plymouth, game five next on Friday Night Hockey. They call it the House of Green. Budweiser Gardens in London, Ontario, the home of the London Knights. It is the Western Conference Final as the Knights host the Plymouth Whalers in Game 5. The Knights with a 3-1 lead. Inside, the Whalers dressing room. That's Vince Trocek. He's got 23 points in the postseason. He knows he has to try to lead his team to victory in hostile territory. Hi, everybody. I'm Rob Fultz, and welcome to Friday Night Hockey. It is the playoff edition Western Conference Final from London, Ontario. And the London Knights are looking to close out another series and move into the Ontario Hockey League Championship. One year ago, they were in the MasterCard Memorial Cup Final. They call it unfinished business. They want to get the job done tonight. A little rest before they take that next step. But they know that the step will be difficult because of the way the Plymouth Whalers have have played the London Knights. In fact, the London Knights' only loss on home ice was a double overtime loss to these very same Plymouth Whalers. You take a look, goals 17-13 in favor of the Knights. The shots, the accuracy, it has been one of those series that could go either way. In fact, in Plymouth, they were seesaw. Momentum changed both ways. We spoke to the coaches before the games, and they said both these teams are ready to go. Mike Vellucci said his team wants to win. So too does Dale Hunter. And two weeks ago on this very sheet of ice, it was the Kitchener Ranger. They were down 3-1, and the London Knights came out and dominated the game. They went into a 4-1 victory, winning the series 4-1, and setting themselves up for this series against Plymouth. And now, another pivotal game five in this jam-packed Budweiser Garden. Well, what's going to happen in game five by the first four? You can't really say that one team is going to dominate because we've seen it seesaw both ways. Momentum has changed not only from game to game, many times from shift to shift. I don't have the answers. Perhaps these two gentlemen do. They'll be the ones that call it. All right, RJ Broadhead, Sam Cosentino, do you have any answers on what we might see tonight? Well, we hope to have some answers very soon, Rob. Uh, you know, it's one of those series you, you might look at it and say, OK, the London Knights are up three games to one. Here we go again. They're going to cruise to a, another series win. But the Knights coaching staff, the players, Sam, will be the first to tell you this has not been an easy series. There hasn't been an easy game. No, there's not a lot different between these two hockey clubs. The bounces have seemed seemingly gone London's way. And if you look at this series to date, really all one goal games. The two 6-4 wins for London are the result of empty net goals. And so it's featured everything. Great goaltending, unbelievable goal scoring, skills, good hits, fights, suspensions. I mean, just about everything you can want in a playoff series, we've seen, and it's only four games old. And a, a lot of that stuff we've seen has come from Tom Wilson. He has been a force for the Plymouth Whalers. Yeah, this guy is something else. And you go back to uh, just before the World Junior Camp, and everyone thought that this guy had a real good chance of making the team. Well, his camp didn't go particularly well. So in the second half, he was inspired by that. This guy's got man size and man strength. He skates like the wind, and he can shoot the puck a ton. He's been a bull in a china shop in the series and has accounted for almost half of the goals for Plymouth to this point. They're going to need some other people to step up. But when I look at Tom Wilson, 
He might be the last you see of him here in Major Junior because I think he plays for the Washington Capitals next year in the National Hockey League. Well, you're right, Sam. There's no doubt he's been dominant during the OHL season into the playoffs in this series. But so is Max Domi, and he's in his draft year, led the Knights in scoring during the regular season. He's carried that over into the playoffs. Well, you know what? Last year, I look at Max Domi, and he was Ty Domi's son. This year, I look at him, and he's Max Domi. He has really come out, and he has made a name for himself. He skates unbelievably well. His first two steps are the best of anyone in the Canadian Hockey League. He shoots the puck a ton. He has no problems going into dirty areas. He edges extremely well. And this guy has worked himself into the uh, top round of the National Hockey League draft coming up in June. He has been uh, unbelievable for the Knights, and it continues here in the playoffs. Well, the Plymouth Whalers have dug themselves a hole. They trail three games to one. The Knights haven't lost three straight games in over two months. Plymouth has their work cut out for them. They need to win tonight to force a game six. Friday Night Hockey on Sportsnet. Brought to you by MasterCard. For everything you need to compete this season, there's MasterCard. By Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. And by Old Dutch, the official chip of the CHL. With Old Dutch, quality lives here. Noise starting to build. Budweiser Gardens in London, Ontario. Game five between the London Knights and the Plymouth Whalers standing next to Max Domi. Max, I don't know how we can categorize this series. It's been back and forth and no lead has been safe. Yeah, I know. It's been awesome. I mean, uh, a lot of fun to play in. Uh, two great hockey teams just going out and playing some hockey. And uh, can't ask for much more than that. What about game plan for this one? You're in your own barn. Do you want to do anything specific? No, I mean, just a lot of the same stuff we've been doing all playoffs and all year. Uh, seems to be working pretty good, so we're going to stick to it. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Max Domi's been one of the leaders for the London Knights. He is ready to go. And so, too, are the guys who will call it. Here's R.J. Broadhead and Sam Cosentino. Yeah, that thing Max Domi was referring to that they do at home, that's called win. Starting goaltenders tonight brought to you by Shreddy's official cereal of the CHL. Alex Nedeljkovic, the 17-year-old goaltender, 1996 born, just turned 17 in January. He's from Ohio. This is a big game for him. He was pulled in game four. So can the young goaltender bounce back in a must-win game for the Plymouth Whalers? That is the big question. No question for the London Knights, who their top goaltender's been. Second round pick of the Philadelphia Flyers, Anthony Stolarz, 1994 born from New Jersey. He has been terrific. He's put up solid numbers. And some say a save he made in game three of this series in Plymouth when his team was down four to three to keep them within one. They battled back and won the game that that was the turning point in the series so far. Yeah, and it was Tom Wilson, the hottest hand for the Plymouth Whalers. He was able to deny him, allowing London to come back into that game. This is the big line for Plymouth. Tom Wilson along with Vince Trocek and Sebastian Uvira playing out there. Keep an eye on number 25 for Plymouth. That's Vince Trocek. He was the leading scorer in the Ontario Hockey League this season, and he has the puck now at center. Trocek a draft pick to the floor of the Panthers. Tried to throw it in front. Uvira got it in front of the net. Nobody there for Plymouth. John Luca Kirkarudo to his defense partner Nick Melissa. Pass picked off in the middle and Bohor battle send it in deep. He'll go in and chase while Tyler Ferry heads off for a change. That'll be picked off by Seth Griffith. Oh, he almost walked out in front, but Alex Nadell to make it a big save and then the crowd erupts after a Max Domi hit. Scott Harrington shot in front, redirected by Domi. There's a big save by Nadelkovic. Very important for Nadelkovic to get some touches early on. Pulled four goals and 11 shots in game number four. But the youngster unflappable. A couple of good early saves for Nadelkovic. Oh, Garrett Miller, he's hit hard as he got to the line by big Nikita Zadorov. How do you like the start to this one? Woo. Tough to beat the start. Knights looking for a little offense. Ricard Raquel, he spent some time with the Anaheim Ducks earlier this season. He's been sent back to Plymouth and the Whalers ice the puck in the crowd at Budweiser Gardens cheers the play on the ice. Yeah, and huge hits to start this game and a couple of them coming from the London Knights. First, Gianluca Cucuruto reverse. He gives it away and because of that he has to fight for the puck in his own end with his head down. Max Domi runs him and lets him know that he is there and a physical force to be reckoned with. And then Ricard Raquel bumped off the puck, but as it goes into the middle, Mirror's taken up by big Nikita Zadorov. 
And a couple of draft eligibles getting on the board, at least physically early on. And now Dale Hunter having words, figured that Nason on his way to the bench took some liberties with his player and wants to send a message early on to not let this thing get out of control. Ryan Rupert on the faceoff for London, number 64. He's the hottest player in this game. He's got a point in seven straight. Curtis Crombie. Slides the puck ahead to Ryan Hartman. Cross ice to Matt Misterly. The Whitby native will just dump it in. That's something we'll see a lot of, RJ. We talked to uh, Mike Malucci, the head coach for the Plymouth Whalers, and one thing he said he wants to do is keep that puck away from Stolarz on the dump -ins. He's been really good at stopping that ring and allowing the mobile defense core for London to get involved and move pucks early and quickly out of their own zone. Keys to the game tonight brought to you by Irwin Tools, the makers of Vice Grip, Groove Lock Pliers, invite you to celebrate National Tradesman Day on September 20th. Remember that song, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, a Michael Jackson hit back in the 80s. Uh, off the off the wall album and you know what for Mike Bellucci and the Whalers they just need to keep scoring they can't give up here they've had trouble getting separation from the London Knights in the series haven't really had a two goal lead to speak of and when you look at the London Knights they're like Jaws they see that blood in the water they're going to attack they don't want to extend the series any further than it has to go John Luca Kirkarudo number 32 for Plymouth he was 10th in defenseman scoring during the OHL regular season there's Vince Trocek Trocek walks in, tries to make a move. Scott Harrington, he was with him the whole way. Rivera, he can't get around Tyler Ferry, and Ferry starts things the other way for the Knights. Bo Horvat in over the line. He's got Griffith with him, elects to shoot, and Alex Nedeljkovic, a calm glove save, and gets the whistle. Well, this is a, a huge early situation for Alex Nedeljkovic. You talked about it, just turning 17 years old. This guy went 19-2, 1-1 during the regular season, and really from about mid-February on, took over the net from Matt Mahalik, who's a drafted goaltender into the National Hockey League by the Carolina Hurricanes. The same owner, Peter Kermanos, owns both of these hockey clubs, so you'd think that maybe even Mahalik would get the nod. But Mike Bellucci has full control. He went to Nedeljkovic in early February. He took the net away, and he goes back to the kid after getting Getting pulled. That was a big question mark coming into the series. Would a 17-year-old goaltender be able to handle what London has to throw at? Broadhurst puts another shot right on, and Nadelkovic covers that short side and hangs on to the rebound. Knights, a 3-1 edge in shots. Early on, they're testing the youngster. And Nadelkovic just seemingly unflappable early on, especially after big hits. The crowd getting into it. You look at the games combined between the regular season and playoffs. 28-6-2. 2.38 goals against. A couple of shutouts in there. And this guy's not eligible for the National Hockey League draft until next year. You know the shots are going to come for Plymouth in this game, though. Over the last three contests, they've averaged 44 shots on goal. Big push early on from the Knights. Remy Alley. Comes out of the corner with a puck. Green Valley, Ontario native. Puts it right back down low. Brett Wolitschka sends it back to Zadora. One-time shot that missed the net. Matt Mistily slides it ahead to Ryan Hartman. Hartman tries the cross-ice play to Connor Carrick. He put it in front of the net. That could have been dangerous. Justin Sefton. He'll try to skate this one out for the Knights. He'll get to center. Now he's been over the Plymouth line. That pass goes off the skate. Walichka tracks it down. Right, Walichka works his way into the corner. Ellie's open. There's a short side save by Nedeljkovic. Ellie tracks another one down. He comes out of the corner. There's a shot. That's off the shin pad. Comes all the way out to center. Matt Mistily gets stood up by Sefton, and that will draw an interference call. Well, wait a sec. The Knights... No goaltender knew which <laughs> should leave the net. In that case, you better stay. It'll be a high sticking call, and it'll actually yeah, it's the point with Whalers. It. It'll be Mastilli's heading over to the box. So a Sefton came up to get him, and when you look at the replay, clearly gets him right in the chops. And so a, a tough break here for the Plymouth Whalers having to defend against this vaunted London power play. London's power play in this series. They've scored seven power play goals. But look out for this guy, Vince Trocek. He can be dangerous shorthanded. Pokes the puck loose to Tom Wilson. Tried the return feed to Trocek and only matter. Gains control for the Knights. Spots the late trailer. That's Alex Broadhurst. 
Sends it over to Griffin. Griffin's shot. That's gloved by Nedeljkovic. And another good shot there. And Seth Griffith uh, returning from a hand injury. And you go back about a week and a half ago, and the Knights finally felt like he was back to where he was shooting the puck. The one thing that he doesn't get a lot of credit for, although he is a pure goal scorer, he does have an amazing shot. And he has that ability not only to score in front of the net, but on the fly and from outside the slot as well. Minute 23 to go in this power play. Ole Matta, number two for the Knights. He's a Pittsburgh first round pick and wound up going offside as he left the puck for Seth Griffin. Well, a, a little disjointed this power play for the London Knights so far, but when you look up and down the lineup, it's been a fairly balanced attack. Max Domi leading the way with three goals uh, in this series. And you're looking at a group of guys who have come back from the MasterCard Memorial Cup experience last year and I think have benefited greatly from it into this year in their development. Holy Matta led the team and defenseman scoring in both the regular season and playoffs, but the Knights having some trouble getting the puck inside the Plymouth zone. Griffin, he'll just send it in deep. Domi waits for it along the boards, throws it in front of the net, and Raquel, it's a two-on-two -two shorthanded for the Plymouth Whalers. He's got Stephen Nason with him. Nason gets a shot. That's blocked it away. The rebound goes back to Nason, but he can't put it on net again. And two guys up front for the Plymouth Whalers are going back to the draft two years ago. Mike Vellucci guaranteed me both would be first-round picks, and they were off everyone's radar screen. Of course, Nason goes to Ottawa at 21, and Raquel to Anaheim at 30. Final 30 seconds of this night's power play. They haven't had much going. Only Matt is in over the line. Behind the net, Walitska knocks it down. Moves it to Domi. Domi right back into traffic. Loses it at the side of the net. Cleared once again by the Plymouth Whalers. Now just 15 seconds to go in the power play. Matt has to wait for his teammates to get back on side. Griffith, he gets his pocket picked at center by Krojak, and he heads off along with Wilson for a line change. Yeah, good job, especially in the neutral zone by both Wilson and Trocek had two separate shifts on that kill and spent some time in the offensive and neutral zones doing it. Misterly back on the ice. Whalers back to full strength, and it'll be Misterly chasing after this loose puck. Scott Arrington got there first. Mitchell Hurd. Hurd watched closely by Zadorov, number 15 for Plymouth. He's spent some time in the American Hockey League earlier this season with Lake Erie. Heard redirects one right into the Knights bench, and that will cause a whistle. A fast and furious start. Still looking for our first goal of Game 5 of the Western Conference Final. Behind the London Knights bench with Dale Hunter. Dale, is this the kind of tempo you expected to start this game? Yeah, you know, both good teams, and both teams uh, really skating well tonight. And, uh, you'll see uh, a lot of skating, a lot of playmaking out there, and whoever executes is going to win. What's the key then? Try to get your defense to get the puck moving to the forwards as quickly as possible? Yeah, you do. You know, they're, they're going to come hard on them. you got to get the puck moving D to D and get it up. Oh, okay. Thanks very much. Okay, thanks. Well, Dylan Hunter has gone for some repairs. It looks like he will be okay. He took a deflection off the noggin, but he's gone for work. And right now, both these teams working to get the first goal. Yeah, you never like to see that. No. I think he wanted to go in and check the J score. Huge baseball <laughs> fan. Both Dylan and Dale. Every time we go into the room, the first thing they're asking about the Blue Jays. <laughs> Mitchell Hurd brings it in over the London line. Hurd shot. That's blocked inside the rebound. Put off the post. Curtis Crombie had jumped into the rush. Oh, a lucky break for London. You know, it's amazing, RJ, because when you talk to both coaches, the series, uh, each game has really come down to the execution of one individual play or one bounce, seemingly. And this is the bounces that Plymouth has not been getting. This puck goes right off the post, off the rebound with from Crombie. Uh, cramming down on the rush, and you see Stolarz overplays it just a touch to his glove side, right off the skate, and inadvertently up from Bean, and off the post it goes. That's puck luck, and it hasn't gone Plymouth's way this series. Well, he's some tough work to get the puck out. Well, Ichka directs it in, and he'll try to walk into the corner. Austin Levi's right there with him. Raquel tries to spin away from Eli, needed a little help from his goaltender, Alex Nedeljkovic, to get that puck to the corner. That's in front of the net. Ellie takes a swipe at it. It's knocked away from him before he can get good composite on it. And then the Plymouth Whalers ice it. When you look at this uh, 
London Knights Hockey Club, and really it starts on the back end. Anthony Stolarz picked up midseason, but Scott Arrington is the captain, and for good reason. This guy, to me, is one of the best shutdown defensemen in the entire Canadian Hockey League, and he's helped Ole Mata along the way. He's helped Nikita Zadorov along the way. He's helped Tommy Hughes along the way, and he is the anchor, arguably one of the top three or four defensive cores in all of the Canadian Hockey League. Pro check inside his own zone. Trying to find some open ice. Spots Uvira. He'll get to center. Dump it in. Tom Wilson will go to the corner against Ole Mata. Pushes Mata aside. Uvira has it poked past him. And an opportunity for Kyle Plantzer. A rookie over the line for London. Drops it off for Ferry, the overager. Right back to Plantzer. Oh boy, he just missed a freight train called Tom Wilson. Bull yeah. Horvat's pinned up against the boards. Wilson is just, a, I mean, he is a menace out there. It's his ice. Try to take it from him. Yeah, we've used that term a couple of times, and I don't think it's been any more true than in this series. Melissa pass to Vera. He's got Wilson on his right side. Elects to shoot, and Stolarz, that block has been busy early on. Pass to center. Domi can't handle. Throw check. Tail end of a shift. Made a pretty good move, but fired it high. That went off the dasher board straight up in the air. Throw check. Caught it, but before he could get a shot away, he was knocked down. Mata gets it to the line, and the Knights will be able to clear. Chris Tierney, he's up there with Domi. Domi now working his way to the net. Quick shot, Nadelkovic a little peek behind him, but he was able to squeeze it and get the whistle. You know, the London Knights have this uncanny ability to capitalize on every chance, and it looks like a harmless two-on-two -two rush. Both guys right in the corner, but watch how quickly Domi accelerates. Those first two steps are like no other in the Canadian Hockey League. He picks this puck up, he shoots the hole, and gets a good opportunity on Ndelkovic, but a good save nonetheless. That explosive ability that Domi has is it's amazing to watch how quickly he gets to an area from going at a dead stop to full speed. Elian Hurd on the faceoff. Hurd wins the draw, and Connor Carrick rifles it around the boards. That didn't get out. Another chance. Zach Lorenz is there. Tight quarters with Hurd. Lorenz, his pass comes right back to him. That was deflected, and Anthony Stolar stopped that low shot. Rupert's pass into the skates of Griffith. Coming the other way is Ryan Hartman. It's almost a surprise that he's back in the lineup for Plymouth. Number 21, Ryan Hartman, a key contributor, but he had suffered a, a bad cut. But he is back ahead of schedule. Shot through a screen by Lawrence, and Anthony Stolarz was able to get the angle and make it look easy. Well, Anthony Stolarz is an amazing story in his own right, RJ. He got cut by two different junior teams. He had to travel to Albany, New York, to make a team in Corpus Christi, Texas. And from there, he ends up getting a scholarship. He goes to... Uh, University feels that as the third goaltender, things aren't working out there. The London Knights get him to come over midway through the season, and he has been outstanding. I mean, I think the Philadelphia Flyers got a beauty in this guy, and the scout Neil Little should be credited for that. Chris Tierney sends it ahead. Goldman over the line. Drops it off for Broadhurst. That pass will be picked off by Ricard Raquel. Right back the other way. Garrett Muir's just on side was Nick Melisse. He was jumping into the rush, heading to the front of the net. Pass never got to him. Look out, Domi trying to split the target. Max Domi scores! And the London Knights jump in front one to nothing. Just moments ago, we showed you a replay of Max Domi and his ability to take off. We'll watch him shoot this gap. He gets a step now, and although Kukurudu does a pretty good job of keeping him to the outside, it's that precision shot. It's not only the ability to skate for Domi, but his ability to shoot the puck, especially on the fly, and he's able to pick that far post and bounce it in to give the Knights the lead. Ninth goal of the postseason. That leads the Knights. Four of those in this series, RJ. I mean, he has really stepped up his game. Yeah, he's had some big goals. Knights looking for a little more. Bull Horvat in front of the net. Ferry just fired it wide. Now Ferry's working to get that puck in front. Procheck knocks him down. Bull Horvat in there.
Ferry doing a good job against Trocek. Now Colin McDonald has more bad pinned up against the boards. Seth Griffin steals. Harrington wants to get a shot away. Griffin dumped it in deep. Missed a lead. Off the glass. Knights argued for a moment. Off the glass and out of play. No damage done. Face off will be deep in Clement's zone. Max Domi has the Knights up. Forty-eight years ago today, the Rolling Stones visited London, Ontario, at the old London Gardens just south of the 401, a short drive from where the Budweiser Gardens are. Now, the Rolling Stones in 1965 were a relatively new group, but the fans were so enthusiastic, they burst through the snow fence in front of the stage, and they had to cancel the concert midway through. The song that they had to do when they canceled it was off the hook, and that's the way that this series has been between Plymouth and London. Guys? Well, I can see how that one went. Hello, London! Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Dakota Mermis can't keep that puck in. Nikita Zadorov is back there. Zadorov moved up a little bit in the final rankings from Central Scouting. He moved all the way up to 22nd. Lawrence, he walks in, tried short side on Stolarz, and Stolarz got enough of it, knocked it out of play. Well, it's that one big save you look for, and we talked about the save in Wilson on game three that would have given the opportunity for Plymouth to go up 5-3. Well, with London up a goal here, a pretty good opportunity for Lorenz, but so good, so active with the blocker has been Stolarz, and he denies Lorenz that opportunity. Five points for Plymouth. You get the feeling the scouting report has said go blocker on Stolarz? Yeah, but I think that scouting report might have to change. I mean, he <laughs> continuously throws that right arm out. Domi, dangerous again, almost stole that puck. He can close the gap quickly. Broadhurst, his pass to Domi, doesn't get to him, goes back to Mata. That's deflected in front by Domi just wide. Domi has it in the corner. He'll go back to the point. Tommy Hughes off the boards. Might have been trying to bounce that in front of the net. Didn't work out for him. Rivera's attempted dump in goes into the Knights bench. Well, you look at uh, the Plymouth Whalers, and the one issue they've had this entire series is the inability to get separation. They've led on a couple of occasions, uh, but only under 12 minutes the whole series. And so when you're looking for a little breathing room, the ability to play maybe your third and fourth line, that hasn't existed for Mike Bellucci. They have not been able to get that separation, that two-goal lead, if you will. And here they are fighting through the latter stages of the first down one. High shot from Griffith. That narrowly missed. Matt Mistoli, just 17, had 34 goals during the regular season. Number 22 for Plymouth. He's ridden hard into the boards by Tommy Hughes. Pass back to the line. Kirk Arudo looking for a lane. That's not easy to find against the Knights. He'll just carry it back behind the net. Kirk Arudo looking for Mistoli to get to it. Scott Harrington right the play. Wilson keeps it in. Mistoli puts it in deep. Throw check along the boards. He's rocked up by Hughes. Misterly in the corner now. That's picked off by Bo Horvat. Horvat, the top-ranked prospect in this game. He's at 15. Ryan Hartman of Plymouth is 16. So an interesting battle. The game inside the game in this one tonight. Well, after all the rolling stones and the dancing and the singing, I think <laughs> Rob Falls has recovered. You're still there, Rob. Yeah. And the only thing that can follow it up, RJ, is talking about the UFC, UFC 159, and what a matchup with John Bones Jones and Kale Sonnen. Prelim fights you can see on East Ontario, West the Pacific tomorrow at Eastern, 5 Pacific time. That's right, Stones, UFC, we got it all covered. <laughs> one of the walkout songs might be a Stones song for one of the fighters. Next thing you know, this guy will be eating cereal on there. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> Well, here's Ryan Hartman now for the Plymouth Whalers. In front of the net, Lorenz, he was all tied up by Ole Matta. Couldn't get a stick loose. Hartman sits into the corner, takes a hit. That's fine. He was one of the penalty minute leaders in the OHL. Hartman was seventh with 120 penalty minutes. That led Plymouth. Blacksher, he gets stood up by Connor Carey. Bromby moves it ahead to Hartman. He's at the end of the shift. So is Lawrence. He has to dump it in and head off. 
to see a lot of that the cross corner jumping that we talked about but you know if you're making the line change it makes it obviously tough for retrieval but something you want to do is keep it away from Stola. Tierney he had an assist on the back storm he goes to handling his way in he gets knocked down leaves it for Plancer behind the net Austin Levi takes care of him and Ricard Raquel comes in to retrieve the loose puck that's stolen by Domi what a first period by Domi Gets those legs moving again, knocked down by Raquel. The crowd at Budweiser Gardens wanted a penalty call. It's not coming. He's got some kind of jump tonight. Raquel, the import from Sweden. Pass doesn't get through. Vera kicks it down low. Raquel tied up in the corner by Mermis. Vera, the former Oshawa general, not much room to maneuver. Vera barreling into the corner. Pass comes back to the line, but Levi had to let it come outside. That took a funny hop off the stanchion. No damage done. Went back behind the net for the Knights, and Tierney starts off for London. Alex Nedeljkovic plays it to his defenseman, Melissa. Goes off the boards, and Tom Wilson starts to get ahead of steam. First round pick of the Washington Capitals. That shot is blocked by Tommy Hughes. Sam, we watched game two. How many times did you look at me and just say, Tommy Hughes? Yeah, he, he, you'll never notice him. He doesn't score a ton of points. You look at him, yeah, he's a, he's a plus 10, I think third on the Knights right now, but he will always defend against the opposition's best player, and he does a great job at it. Well, Plymouth's got a few to choose from as far as their best players. They're out there now. Tom Wilson, Vince Trocek, Stefan Nason. This is a potent line. Nason has the puck. Sends it in deep. Wants Tom Wilson to do some work down low, and he can be effective there. Steals the puck from Mermis. Tyler Ferry saw the hit coming. He's able to make the pass to Seth Griffith. Griffith slides it to Horvat. Now he heads to the front of the net. One shot. Stopped by Nadelkovic and cleared by the Whalers. Under five minutes to go here in the first period. Just the goal from Max Domi as the Knights ahead in game five of the Western Conference Championship. Knights could hoist the Wayne Gretzky trophy with a win here tonight. Mitchell Hurd brings it in offside and he'll just let that go and get back onside. Ryan Rupert. Dumps it in. Nadelkovic leaves it behind his net. Has to play it. Remy Alley was closing on. Comes back to Nikita Zadorov. That one almost picked up by Hartman. That went off the head, I think, of Ole Mata and out of play. Just the goal by Domi so far in game five. Oops. Sam RJ Post has a special collector's edition of all the CHL goalies. And you can buy them on freshly marked boxes of post cereals. Not only is it the collector on the front, you flip it around and you get the collector cards on the back. Collectible, there's 24 in total. And this is the world's biggest box of cereal they gave me. I'm sharing it with everybody. You want some cereal? There we go. Make sure you get the box before it's empty. Here, you want some cereal? Come on, have some cereal. It's good for you. No, you oh, not a honeycomb fan. Hold on. Well, we have to give him some time now to finish it off. Busted. We busted him. Finally, we caught him red-handed. Domi in front of that redirected in by Bronhurst. What a first period by Max Domi. A great pass. Bronhurst puts it in. It's 2 nothing Knights. Broadhurst. Broadhurst was not sure if he's going to be able to be in the lineup for game number four because of a hit he had suffered in game three. But he comes back and scores twice in that game. And here he gets good inside position. And the one thing you have to do as a defenseman, if you can't take the body, you got to be able to take the stick. And Levi could not do either one, allowing Broadhurst to pick up his eighth of the postseason and give London that big two goal edge. Great camera work. Good luck at that perfect pass by Max Domi. He's been on fire. Every time he's touched the puck in this first period, something's happened. Another chance. Nadelkovic able to make the save on Tyler Ferry. 
Tyler Ferry is one of those guys that you cannot win a championship without. Over the course of the last two years for Dale Hunter and Mark Hunter, when he was the head coach last year, he's played forward, he's played defense, he's played forward as a third defenseman, if you will, and a guy that gives you that max effort every time out. And again, not one of the guys who steps into the spotlight or who gets known or gets recognized. You don't see him in the paper, hear about him in the, on the radio, but a guy you need to have on your team if you want to win a championship. And he's been out there head to head against this Trocheck line for the Plymouth Whalers. It's a guarantee, RJ, that Hughes is going to be out there and that Ferry's going to be out there when Wilson and Trocheck or, or both of them are out there. Well, you look at what Trocheck has done. Leading the OHL in scoring during the regular season, second only to Mark Shifley in the postseason, yet he's been held to two points in this series and both coming in the last game. Got one uh, on goal there, but Stolarz made the save. Yeah, and when you look at Trocek, held off the scoreboard for the first three games of the series, RJ, that had not happened since going back to last year and definitely had not happened since he became a member of the Plymouth Whalers at the trade deadline coming over from the Saginaw Spirit. So to think that you have the shutdown guys to be able to hold the league's leading score off the board in three playoff games, that's something else. And when you talk to other people about Trocek, everyone says, this guy is a player. Florida's got another good one there. Mitchell Hurd sends it in deep. Ryan Hartman, he's not afraid to play the body, went barreling into Ole Mammoth. Knight's able to weather that, and Walichka dumps it into the Plymouth bench. Well, there's other playoff action going on as we're down to only a handful of teams left. Yeah, no score in, in that one. The, the Bay Como, Blenville, Boisbriand, just uh, underway in Bay Como. And I tell you what, Joel Bouchard, who's the head coach now, since the two coaches have been suspended in that one, you would have had to show up in Bay Como in full riot gear because they will be out of their minds cheering on Le Dracar tonight. Well, a uh, bench clearing brawl at the end of game four. That series is even at two games apiece. All four goalies are suspended. So all of a sudden, Bay Como <laughs> and Blainville Baudrillard have to go down the depth chart a little bit in a pivotal game five in that series. Oh, boy. That. Could have been dangerous off the referee came right in front of Nedeljkovic and he read the play okay. Well it's odd RJ because both of those clubs are very lucky to have had third string goalies who have played significant numbers. When you look back to the score sheet from that Wednesday game yeah Blanville wins it 4-3 but the right side indicates the penalties and at the uh, final buzzer Things started to go haywire Cedric Paquette who played for Blanville Bob Rian, uh, getting into it. Fights all over the ice, the backups into it, the coaches yelling and screaming at one another. Several suspensions, I think 15 in total, including both coaches. Finds Levy, what a circus. Off the faceoff, Scott Arrington got a shot on goal. The captain of the Knights. Two time World Junior, and I got a real kick going to the. World Junior Camp last year, everyone's saying, who's this Scott Harrington guy? I said, eh, just give him some time. And it turned out before he hurt his shoulder to be Canada's best defenseman in that event. Hunter Carrick jumps into the play, drops it off for Tom Wilson. He tried blocker side, but missed the net. That takes a funny hop off the stanchion. We've seen a couple off that stanchion in the corner take strange hops. Put that one in the memory bank. Yeah, there's been a couple of weird ones down at that end. You look at uh, Stefan Nason of the Plymouth Whalers and the guy that he and Trocek to me really need to step up if Plymouth wants to continue on with this series here. I mean, there's two guys who throughout the course of the regular season uh, had the ability to put up top points and have struggled to find the board here in this series. Both guys better than a point per game in both the regular season and the postseason. Domi's out there again with Tierney and Broadhurst. This has been the most effective line for the Knights. They've accounted for both goals today. Mr. Can't get his pass past Holy Matt. Matt will join this rush. Tierney gets to the line. Stopped by Austin Levi. This comes about a foot outside the zone, and Tierney will try to find some space to get it back inside that Plymouth. And Zadorov takes a hit from Mr. Lee, sends it in. Alex Nedeljkovic. Moves it. 
Colin McDonald, he's the captain of the Plymouth Whalers. Also a London native. And 14th round pick, and you talk about a guy who can come in and be a captain here in his overage year. Big stuff for a late round pick. Knights relentless keeping this puck in the Plymouth zone. Pass back to Lewitska just a little bit behind him. And Scott Arrington takes his time, lets his teammates clear the zone. Remy Alley didn't take long for him to get in on the four check. Bird gets double teamed, able to make the pass to Austin Levi and Zach Lorenz. The former Kitchener Range sends it into the corner. Ryan Hartman's there first. Chop set. That goes up high, well wide. Wolitschka cuts to center. Ellie's calling for the pass. Wolitschka gets it to him, but it's poked aside before he can get a shot. And the net is off. And who's that? It's Ryan Rupert there to a, get up. There's a shocker. Rupert going hard to the net. His brother Matt still uh, out of the lineup. Well, he's drawn a penalty. As he goes hard to the net. It'll be heard. You can see it left side of your screen. Heard takes him down. It looks to me as if Rupert was already on his way down, but nonetheless, it'll end up resulting in the Plymouth penalty to Mitchell Heard. And with 37.6 seconds left, the London Knights can really, really do a good job at taking all the confidence away from Plymouth with a goal here in this power play. Well, we talked about in the open, Sam, that no lead has been safe. In fact, <laughs> the Knights did have a 3 nothing first period lead, and that hung around in game three until the third, found themselves down 4-3, and had to come back to win 6-4. So this one might have a little more drama for us. Now, this series has had nothing but momentum changes. Griffith, back to Mata. Ten seconds to go in the period. Domi waits, tried to go up high short side. Nadelkovic was able to block that. That clearing by the Plymouth Whalers will do it. For the first period, but a good period for the London Knights. That's uh, something else when you look at Domi. He's had great jump in this game, as he did a couple of weeks ago when we were here in the Kitchener series. It looks like he has that same kind of jump here in this one, and that's a scary proposition for Plymouth. A 2 0 lead. Max Domi, Chris Tierney, Alex Broadhurst, a couple of points each in that opening frame, and the Knights will have a minute 23 that will carry over a power play time into the second period. A good first for the Knights. They're up 2 0 in game five. Summary brought to you by Old Dutch, the official chip of the CHL, with Old Dutch quality lives here. Max Domi opened the scoring, added an assist on Alex Broadhurst's goal and a 2 0 lead for the Knights after the first period. Welcome back inside Budweiser Garden. Sam, I don't think there's any question who the best player on the ice in the first period was. Yeah, Max Domi was simply awesome. I mean, he looked like Mark Shifley when we did a game in Belleville a couple of weeks ago where every time he touched the puck, he made something happen, and he has two points to show for it. Well, it was the exact start the London Knights wanted in a game in which they can clinch. The play of the period brought to you by Steak Chili Saves for Success program where saves made resulted in contributions up to $30,000 to minor hockey teams. Go to steakchili.ca to see the winners. Already up 1-0 when Domi and Tierney play a little give and go and it's a perfect pass that leads Alex Broadhurst to the goal past the Dalkovich and in. And when we saw Domi's depth shooting ability there with a great pass. It's a must win for Plymouth. Let's go bench side where Rob Falls is standing by. Rob. With Big Tom Wilson of the Plymouth Whalers. Now, I don't want to say you guys have been in this position before, but the one thing you know is that you guys can come back from a deficit. Yeah, I've been coming back all series. I mean, this is a huge second period for us. We're going to come out hard, kill this penalty off, and get back to work. Tell me the mood in the intermission. What was the feeling with the team? Yeah, it was a little quiet. I mean, guys are starting to get a little nervous, but, I mean, we just talked about coming out with energy, forgetting the first period, and uh, battling back to get these two. Tom, thanks very much. Thank you. Tom Wilson has been instrumental in the Plymouth Whalers' success. He knows he has to be a big part of it in the second period. Ready to go now. Here's RJ and Sam. Thanks very much, Rob. Tom Wilson has been a force. There's no question. Vince Trocek, he has to come up with a huge period. 
And the London Knights, what a great first they had. Max Domi was all over the place. That goal and an assist along with his line mates, Chris Tierney and Alex Bridehurst. They each chipped in with a couple of points. And now to start the second here, Sam, a minute 23 on the power play for London so they could really extend this lead big time in game five. I think it's absolutely essential for Plymouth to kill the rest of this penalty off. I mean, you get down 3-0 early in the second period, usually in that that first minute area that can really take away from your confidence which I already think is wavering for Clinton. Austin Levi inside his own zone. Fires it over everybody's head. He'll force the Knights to start 200 feet away. Holy Matta wastes no time behind his own net. Matta over the line but. I think it was Seth Griffith was uh, half a stride offside. Yeah, and that's the one thing we saw in the power play for London in that first period. It was a little disjointed, and their entries were really, really difficult. That starts with that good first pass from your defenseman, and then that trickles through to the forwards up front, such as Domi Horvat and Griffith now out there. Knights 0 for 1 on the power play in this game. Their second opportunity with a man advantage. Seven power play goals they've scored in this series. Rod Hurst, he can't get through three whalers that were waiting there for him. Get it on this guy's stick. That's a good plan. Here's Domi now, picking up some speed, makes a great move. Domi walking into the slot, tried to drop it off. And Trocek got in there to break it up. And Trocek takes a hit from Horvath. Trocek again with it. Domi got in front of him, comes to the line. Mata in front of the net and off the skate of Griffith, and that goes out of play, and the faceoff will come outside the line. Yeah, a little too cute for Vincent Trocek there. He had the opportunity behind the net to get that puck down the ice. Instead, he tried to be cute and execute a breakout, and it didn't quite work out that way. And you look at a couple of different power play units for the London Knights. I mean, Bo Horvat and, and Max Domi leading the way with four goals apiece in this series, but it extends down the list. You look at Broadhurst, even Ryan Rupert, and when you get that kind of balanced scoring, it makes it really tough for the opposition to match up against. Second unit out there now for the Knights. Final 20 seconds of the power play. Kirk Arruda loses an edge. Nick Melissa's defense partner. He saw that. Got over to save the day and send the puck down the ice. Nikita Zadorov, the Russian import. Big six foot five defenseman. Wheels to center. He dumps it in, runs into Melissa, and that allows Nadelkovich a chance to play it. And it's out to center. Mitchell Hurd's back on the ice. Plymouth's back to full strength. They've killed off two nights power plays in this game. Tierney intercepts behind the net. Golitschka was there, but an alert play by Giancarlo Kirkarudo to send it outside the zone. John Luca Kirkarudo sends it to center. A huge hit by Sidorov on Tom Wilson. And now Hurd confronts Sidorov, and they drop the gloves. Sidorov trying to use that reach against Mitchell Hurd. Hurd and overager Sidorov. 17 years old. Zidorov gets that right hand loose. Bird lands a right uppercut. Now he's got his right hand loose. Can't throw it though. Couple uppercuts from Zidorov. Zidorov's second fight in this series. And Nikita Zidorov is making his mark. A big hit. A fight. And Budweiser Gardens is on its feet. Now Zadora reminds me of Bam Bam from the Flintstones. He just does not know how strong he is. And here he takes out Tom Wilson, who surely can fend for himself. But Hurd doesn't give him that opportunity. He says, yes, we need a spark. And yes, I'm going to do it against the biggest guy. A massive hit there by Zadora on Wilson. And don't think Wilson didn't take that number into account. And you go back to game three in a situation where Hurd goes right up into the head of Broadhurst. He served a one game suspension which was game four and it was only decided just before game time that he'd be allowed to play here in game two especially with the fact that Broadhurst was able to come back and pick up a couple of goals in that game four. And so he goes at the rough stuff again. So too does Bam Bam Zadorov. And those two combatants will sit for the next five and hurt an extra deuce for the instigator. Well, that will put the Knights back on the power play. And that's the last thing you want to do is get that 
that extra penalty for the instigator and so when you look at a situation where you want to exact revenge you have to pick a maybe a better spot than that especially down to nothing but didn't credit for sticking up for his teammate Mata off the draw his shot was blocked before he got to the net comes outside the line now Mata watched closely by Raquel couple of nice moves bought himself some time Nadelkovic bouncing puck left it behind his net Seth Griffith property of the Boston Bruins has trouble getting away from Levi. Horvat trying to track it down. Big Austin Levi able to keep it along the boards. Matt is behind the net. The defenseman in front. Oh, Horvat scores! A power play goal! The Knights are up 3 0. Dale Hunter looked at his first two power plays that were relatively ineffective for London. So he said, all right, guys, go out and get one. Do what you have to do. And so you look at a guy like Ole Matta, who's supposed to be anchored in the back end. Here he is hanging around the front of the net, but realizes with the loose puck getting to him that he's able to draw attention and then dish it off to Horvat. And you have to watch Horvat. The right side of your screen, he emerges from the corner, and as soon as Matta picks up that puck, what does a good goal scorer like Horvat do? He goes to the front of the net and gets rewarded. Well, Max Domi's playoff scoring lead for the Knights didn't last long. Horvat is now tied him at nine. Plymouth needs some offense. What a sequence, though. Early with that hit by Zadorov, gets in a fight. Knights wind up on the power play, and then they score, and they're up by three. They, they capitalize as good as any team in the Canadian Hockey League. When given the opportunities, especially when needed most, they find a way to reach down and get it done. But this movie has been seen before in this series. A 3 0 lead for London evaporated in eight minutes in game number three, I believe. Anthony stole ours. He'll try to prevent that from happening. There's a test, and he answers it. On well, the power play with an aggressive kill, you have to be good with your stick and work extremely hard to maintain possession. And you see both Domi and Horvat down there. But watch Horvat take off. And the thing about Horvat is, he doesn't go lightning quick to the front of the net. He finds that patient spot where he knows the gap will open up where he can get the puck back from Mata. Brilliant, brilliant play by the Ox for Horvat. Pretty good work by Max Domi down low, too, on the much bigger defenseman, Colin McDonald. And they're just working in the corner, digging that puck free. Mata sneaks down from his defensive post and is able to dish it off to Horvat. But he's played a game for that young man so far. We hear so much now about young players and star players in the NHL. It's that lower body strength, and Max Domi certainly has that. Talking a lot about Martin St. Louis, where the Hunter brothers in the coach's room before the game, and how he's got such a great lower end, a big, what they call thick rear end. And they used it as an example, and they took pictures and video from the Tampa Bay Lightning, Martin St. Louis, and showed the guys in their room, here's what pro legs look like. And many of them feel that. Max Domi already is well on his way to having those pro legs. Now another name got brought up too, and that of course <laughs> Sidney Crosby. We talked about the 2005 MasterCard Memorial Cup played here at the Budweiser Guards, and London thought they'd come out and physical him away from the puck, and that didn't work out. London up by three, buzzing again inside the Plymouth zone. Where are the big guns for the Whalers? Tom Wilson's out there. He's got some speed. Trying to track this puck down. Stolarz moves it out of harm's way. Not out though. Krocek has it along the boards. Back to Connor Carrick. He can be a dynamic defenseman to pick up points. Tom Wilson, he erases Griffith along the boards. Levi is shot. That one goes off the glass. Tom Wilson comes up with it. Uberla shot. Stopped by Stolarz. The rebound there. And it goes to the boards. Tom Wilson relentless going after it. And the safe play by Ole Matta off the glass and out. It's iced by the Knights. But they'll take that face off. Archie, we've talked about this on a couple of occasions, how that icing is called differently here in the Ontario Hockey League, where you're still able to make that change. So it becomes a weapon for you when you're tired defensively. And why are the Knights tired defensively? Good offensive pressure. The shot from Avira there off the pass from Wilson, and a great save there by Stolarz. You talk about making that timely save. You're up 3 0. You have all the momentum. The building's loud, and it continues to get louder after that stop by Stolarz. 
Shots are 14 12 for the Knights. So Stolarz hasn't had an off night by any means. Face off goes to Raquel, heading to the front of the net. The Anaheim pet. Raquel, sharp angle shot. Stolarz was up to that task. Hunts up in the air. Tierney is on trouble, so he spun away from it. Domi lobs it out to center. Levi can't handle it. Tierney streaks in, drops it off, but her back to Tierney. And getting back just in time was Cody Payne to break out of. Domi runs into Nason and he goes airborne. He's okay. He's hustling to get back in the play. Nason tries to move it down low. Puck cleared again by the Knights. Knights are offside, so they'll have to regroup. That gives Austin Levi plenty of time to glide out of his own zone. Stolarz catches that about a foot off the ice at the tip of his blue paint. He'll hang on, and Cody Payne's in there causing a little bit of trouble. Good communication there by Dakota Mermis. You heard him yell to Stolarz, hold on. He knew that there was pressure coming down upon him, and so Stolarz gets the stoppage as Payne tries to create a ruckus. Domi back at it again and just flying through the air and just loving life. Telling Damian Cox in the feature at the intermission that he comes to the rink with a smile on his face and a very rarely leaves. Well, Cody Payne heads off and takes Scott Harrington with him. Good trade off for Plymouth. Yeah, Plymouth won't be upset to see him sit for two. Couple of top flight defense and sitting in the box now for London. This might be a good opportunity for Plymouth to take advantage of that. And they've got Trocek, Wilson out there, along with the smooth skating defenseman, Connor Carrick, Washington fifth round pick. A couple of Washington picks caps it okay with the Plymouth Whalers and Carrick and Tom Wilson. Wilson redirects it on. That was tricky. Stopped by Stolarz. Wilson tries to work his way to the front of the net. How about only Matta staying with him? Well, Matta got pounded in game number four, and he showed no ill effects. He came right back here and started to take a beating in this game, and now starting to initiate. Seth Griffin calmly inside his own zone. Gets away from Trocek. Lightly dumps it in. There's three Whalers back there. Griffiths by himself. Eric spins, drops it off for Curtis Crombie, and the Sarnia native. Head to Trocek. Eric will jump into the play. Tom Wilson. Heading to the front of the net. Carrick waiting for him to get there. The pass doesn't get through. Carrick still has it in the corner. Carrick, an Illinois native. Gets it in front. Stolarz is down. And Stolarz is able to hang on to it long enough to get the whistle. Now Horvath gets knocked down. And Tom Wilson will make his way to the penalty box. The Knights up 3 nothing, And it looks like they're going back to the power play. On the Plymouth bench with Mike Vellucci. Mike, you told us before the game you've been very impressed with your team's resiliency. What did you tell them during the intermission? Well, we got to play better. We made two mistakes, you know. Mistakes I can live with. It's got I got to work hard, and we haven't been working hard enough. And it's like a bad penalty right here. We got to stay out of the box. A little discipline problem, or is it just these guys trying to do too much? Uh, a little bit of both, really. I think we're trying to do a little too much and uh, getting a little frustrated, and we're trying to get a power play out of it, and we haven't gotten one. So, but both. Thanks, coach. Yep, thanks. Right now, trying to generate some offense down three nothing and, and here's the thing you have to be really wary of I mean Tom Wilson yeah was it maybe embellished a little bit it might have been but you can't put yourself in that situation you're down three goals you really have to toe the line if you want to go out and play physical and send a message do it during the course of play do it cleanly but stuff like that after the whistle you put yourself at risk of mm -hmm. taking the penalty even if it's a bad call it's a power play for the Knights it's four on three Domi fans on that one time attempt. Broadhurst gets it back to Domi. He'll send it over to Broadhurst. Domi again. Griffith is poised, waiting for it. Doesn't shoot it. Domi does. Oh, it's off the post, I think. It trickled past Nadelkovic. Didn't go in. Domi creeping closer to the net. There's a shot from Griffith. That's blocked aside by Nadelkovic. Goes right back to Griffith. Domi. Broadhurst, shot by the scores! Another goal on the power play. Broadhurst is second. It's 4 nothing London. And it's the
the teams that go to work 16 17 and 18 Domi at the top of your screen the lower part of your screen is Griffith and Broadhurst number 18 far side takes the one timer it was just a matter of time and I like how the Knights set this thing up it's like a shooting range you throw your two guys out in the wing because you know Plymouth has to keep that tight triangle and allow shot from either side thinking that at one point it's going to work for you and it did for Broadhurst to pick up his second there. Well, Max Domi will surely get an assist. He has four points. He's been in on all four of the night's goals so far tonight. We're still four on four for the next 20 seconds. Harrington and Payne will come out at that point. Levi, he's in on the rush. Hitting only Matta. Matta is spinning away from that trouble. Crochet. Trying to move it down deep, and there's Tommy Hughes. Got it out to center. Matta's in on this rush. Matta. He doesn't shoot. Dumps it in instead. Domi streaks in. Now we'll play five on five. Harrington and Payne are back on the ice. Puck comes to Cody Payne. Payne has to throw check. That direct right on Stolars, and that is an easy save for him. Domi, a, a sensational night here for the London Knights. As Cody Payne now tries to get in and get physical. And here's a guy who grew up in, in Western Florida. And he grew up playing hockey with Colin Sullentrop, a defenseman with the Oshawa Generals. And Payne really actually learned to apply his trade the same way Sullentrop did, playing roller hockey. Decided to move to Ontario for his minor midget years. Was drafted by Oshawa and then acquired by the Plymouth Whalers. And he can say he was traded for Yaramir Yager. Yeah, it was in that deal too. That's right. That's right. His rights were traded from Boston to Dallas in the Yager deal. Good claim to fame. I'd use it. Definitely want to be able to say at some point though that Yager was traded for me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, there. Danish import got it to Mason. Ryan Rupert. Not letting Mason get away. Rupert, the sixth round pick of the Maple Leafs. Off the glass to the line. Colin McDonald kept it in. Deflected a couple of times. Didn't get to the net. It's still loose. McDonald, another crack at shooting. And it's blocked by Tierney and goes into the Plymouth zone. Barrett trying to get those wheels going. Ryan Rupert knocks him down, and he's going to get a penalty. It will be the first power play of the game for Plymouth. McCarrick's one of the of two mobile defensemen for the Plymouth Whalers, so when he gets up to go and he's still ailing from the hip, but he makes one last jig move at the last second, and you can see Rupert gets his knee out and brings Carrick to the ice. And so you want to take an opportunity to get yourself back in the game if you're the Plymouth Whalers. No better time than right now. Knights lead it four to nothing. They've scored twice on the power play. On this first opportunity with a man advantage. Over the last three games, they're rolling at over 33 percent. Trocheck. He shot a lot. Comes to the line. Kirk Arudo gets over there in time. Only Matt intercepts the pass from John Luca. Kirk Arudo. And now more Horvath. Wastes as much time as he can before he dumps it into the Plymouth zone. Trocek to Nason. Right back to Trocek. Only Jones leading point getter. At 109 points during the regular season. Number 25 for Plymouth. Garrett spinning. Matta doesn't let that pass get in front. Tracked down by Broadhurst. And he sends it the length of the ice. Well, London not showing any ill signs here on the penalty kill. And you'll see a huge collapse of four green jerseys every time that puck gets anywhere near Stolarz. Tom Wilson, he leads the rush this time. Big Tom Wilson trying to tuck it in. Go check, picks up the loose puck. Moves it to Wilson. Quickly back to Kirk Arudo. Kirk Arudo was 10th in defenseman scoring in the OHL. Wilson. Back to Kirk Arudo. Quick stick handle deflected by Trocek and Anthony Stolarz got over and he hangs on. Well, you look at these Plymouth Whalers and Tom Wilson while well, he's been a menace all series long has six goals. That's six of the 13 that Plymouth has in this series. But it's a big drop off after that. Raquel with two and then a couple of others with one apiece. And you talk about guys like Trocek who led the league in scoring. 
Uh, Stefan Nason, a point per game player in the regular season, those two have combined for just six points here in four plus games, and that's not good enough. Your best players need to be your best players. They need to get more out of those two in particular. 35 seconds to go in this power play. Kirk Arudo, that shot's off a stick of Bo Horvat, and that's nothing new for Horvat blocking shots on the penalty kill. Well, Gianluca Cucurudo started his career in Sault Ste. Marie, and you go back two years ago at the NHL Research and Development Camp, this guy was touted as a first or second round pick, and his game kind of went downhill. But I tell you, watching him in this series, he's back. Columbus has a steal in the seventh round. I love the way this guy's game has come along, and now he's become a, a real top force defenseman here in the Ontario Hockey League. Last 20 seconds of the power play for the Whalers. Carroll ahead to Raquel, hits him in full flight. Raquel over the line, the Swedish import on his bank camp. Sends it back to Kirk Arruda. Now Carroll winds but doesn't fire. Kirk Arruda has to use his skate. Now he shoots it. Pat save, rebound. Stolars is over. Puck still loose. Makes able to get it behind the net. Back on the ice is Rupert. Pressure's still on here for the Whalers, though. Kirk Arudo trying to find a seam. That's kicked aside. Now a shot from Muir's. Horvat. He lobs it up high, and the Knights clear the zone. They've killed off the penalty, and they've kept Plymouth off the scoreboard midway through this game. Connor Carey. That pass. Misses all his teammates, and it is icing against Plymouth. The Knights have four shots in this period. They've scored on two of them. It's a 4 nothing lead for London. Hard to believe it was 20 years ago, but Sportsnet Magazine takes a look back at the Toronto Blue Jays and their 1993 World Series title back to back. It's on newsstands now. I know Sam and RJ were far too young to remember that, so they'll have to buy the magazine. And tomorrow on East Ontario, West the Pacific, they can watch the Jays and the New York Yankees. Blue Jays coverage begins at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Right now, the Jays and Yankees are tied at two in the top of the fourth. The Blue Jays, Sportsnet Magazine, and Sportsnet. Wow, it was the early 90s. It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> I wasn't even born yet. <laughs> Aaron Lackey, two and two-thirds with five walks, give up a couple of hits and runs in that game and he has since left the game in a surprise start for the Blue Jays. Well the Whalers trying to get something going in this one. Game five of the Western Conference Championship. They trail the series three games to one. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome the U.S. viewers watching us on Comcast tonight. Tyler Ferry moves it ahead to Seth Griffin. Oh Horvath has that bounce away from him. This big line for the Whalers needs to start producing. Melissa, the pass to Trocek. He can't get the puck to set. Oh, Horvat dumps it in. Four goal lead for the night. They're okay, just dumping it in, forcing Plymouth to skate into a sea of green to try to get it inside their zone. Okay, I think it's just one of those things where Plymouth needs to find anything, anything the grass wants to, to give them confidence. Well, now they're. A two on one against them. Tierney with Domi. Tierney couldn't make the pass, didn't get the shot. Now the other way. Hartman, lead pass. Raquel couldn't come up with it. And Stolars, he knocked that to the corner. Hartman came flying in. Zadorov saw the hit. Hartman has it in the corner. There's a sharp angle shot that missed. Kirk Arruda behind the net. Ryan Hartman. He's bumped by Tommy Hughes. Broadhurst steals and he's able to move it out to the neutral zone. Stolars, he gets nearly tangled up with Hartman. Alex Broadhurst, Chicago Blackhawks draft pick. There's a high shot. It's way up and out of play. Nadelkovic was looking for it. No damage done. It's out of play, and it was a physical start, and it's continued on in this game. Yeah, it sure was. I mean, you got a couple of bumps early on, Domi and Zadorov, and that really ignited the crowd. 34 hits combined between these two clubs in this game, and the hits just keep on coming. Being 
four check by Blancher spins away from him. Blancher stayed on him, so he moved it to Colin McDonald. McDonald's pass. Ellie goes the other way. That might have hit the lines back. Comes back to the line, and Matta just kept that on side. Gets it to Mermis. He's got some room. He tried to make the pass in front of the net. Ellie to Plancher. Oh, 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 he stopped. Plancher had all day. That's a big save for Alex Nedeljkovic. Can't go down by five. Payne. He tried to go top shelf, and it's knocked up over the glass, and that goes out of play. I think that would have been nighty night if Flatzer's able to bury that one. But again, good pressure, and from some unsuspecting uh, sources here for the Knights. You're used to seeing Griffith and Domi and Bronner, but here it's Ellie to Flatzer. Goes to the forehand, and it goes right off the edge of the skate of Nadelkovic. And good job by the 17-year-old netminder to not give up. Almost sparked pain at the other end of the ice. Shots are 16 to 6 this period for Plymouth. They haven't been able to solve Anthony Stolons. And the Knights just keep adding on to their lead. Another two this period. That's deflected, just missed the far side. Melissa sends it in deep. Matt missed the lead. He gets tangled up with Scott Harrington. Tommy Hughes pushes Trocek aside and comes out of his own zone. Seth Griffith to Tyler Ferry. Bo Horvath. That shot is blocked. Not out of the zone. Zadora. Maddock gets a little closer. Doesn't shoot. Ferry loses it in the corner. Crombie. He can't get it out. Maddock drops it off and Ferry's the one who retrieves it. Malisa fans on it. Crombie gives him another crack at it. He doesn't get it past Ferry. Tom Bean to the line. Matta will hang around, move it in front to Ferry. Slices it over to Griffith. Horvath's there, and Alex Nedeljkovic has it underneath him, and he will hang on for the whistle. The Knights continuing to push in Game 5 of the Western Conference Championship. Here's the OHL playoff top scorers brought to you by Fram Filters. Participate in the Fram and Prestone Drive for the Cup hockey bracket. Visit www.drivefortheCup.ca. Mark Scheifele with an assist as Barry trails Belleville two to one. Tyler Gravak has a point for the Bulls, and then Domi with his four points tonight, right up to the second, still trailing that pesky Scheifele. Domi sitting at 19th among North American skaters in Central Scouting's final rankings. He might not be satisfied with that spot the way he's rolling tonight. Yeah, I don't think those guys don't know exactly where they are. They might tell you publicly that they never look at the list, so I don't buy it for a second. Tom Wilson, he's got a head of steam, low shot, save Stolars. Nason brought it to the front of the net. Couldn't get a good shot though. Ricard Raquel. Tom Wilson comes up with it in the corner. Tries to move it in front. Harrington and Hughes playing together out there. Stolars able to reach out and make a first baseman like crap. Now the Colts open the scoring in that one, but Belleville has since taken the lead on Quine's sixth of the playoffs. No score between Planville and Bay Coleman, but as you said, RJ, who's going to score? Everyone suspended. <laughs> Calgary and Edmonton gets going a little later on, and that's been a wild back and forth affair. And the Portland Winterhawks looking to punch their ticket for this third straight year in the Edge Nose Cup final. I guess the flip side of that Bay Como Blanville Bois Grand series is you've got third string goalies in the top two on each team are suspended, so should be able to score. Yeah. Another test for Nadelkovic. He has to shut the door now. Under five to go here in the second period, his team's down by four. Another one of those role players for Dale Hunter, Walichka, and Mike Lucci looking up and down his bench, just trying to find an answer, trying to find something to give his club confidence. And that's been such a tough thing when you're constantly fighting to get into a tire, to hang on to a lead. It makes it really tough. You just don't have that kind of breathing room. And you wear down your top players because you consistently have to go to them. And you know, when, you, when you look at this, this Plymouth Hockey Club, it's been fighting one thing against another. You're fighting puck luck. At times, Mike Bellucci felt like he's been fighting the officials. And 
fighting against London Leeds. And, you know, it's been tough. It's been that kind of series. But you look at this hockey club and, and you look at the way the series has gone. It doesn't deserve to end in five games, but that may very well be the case. No, oh, you're right. It has not been easy for the London Knights, but they've found a way. Tyler Ferry takes a rare penalty and interference call. It is on the up near the line. Top of your screen or right side of your screen rather. Second power play for Plymouth. They failed to convert on their first chance. You know, it's funny, RG. Mike Bellucci really took the temperature of his room before this game and said he felt confident with his group. You know, you get into the situation, you're down 3 1, you think you're up against Mount Everest, and you think maybe guys are going to shut it down. But Plymouth has had a lot of pushback in this game, just to not, haven't been able to score. Well, one of those reasons they haven't been able to score is Anthony Stolarz has been sharp when he's been tested. And that's just it. He's done a really good job at making timely saves. And, you know, you look at the 32 save performance in game one to win 2-1, and then you look at a couple of 6-4 wins, and you think, this guy's like Jack Moore. He does what he needs to do when he needs to do it. Deflected save. The rebound goes just wide. Wilson, a chance. That didn't get through. Another chance blocked by Harrington. Oh, boy. The Knights are under pressure, but Plymouth just can't buy one. And London clears it down with a minute 10 to go on the power play. For Garuto. He can't get past Ryan Rupert. Stefan Mason. Over to Trocek. Wilson reaches for it. Kirk Garuto gets it to Cap. Quick shot. That one just missed. Tom Wilson sends it into the corner. Wilson in tight quarters with Ole Mata. Plymouth maintains possession. Turcarudo has to head into retrieve. Turcarudo gets it to Carrick. Carrick can't get a shot past Mata. Mata dives to get it out. Does it. Turcarudo got there just in time. Hughes rips it around and Turcarudo, he can't get to the other side quick enough. Back and forth. You know, the London Knights preach shot blocking. That's something that they teach. And it makes it oh so tough when they are consistently in a lane. Final few seconds of the power play. Another great chance, and that's sent high by Hartman. Hartman leaves it. It goes all the way over to Raquel. The stick of Nedeljkovic letting his teammates know the penalty's over. Settle it out. It goes through the blue paint, and nobody there for the Whalers. Raquel fires. Hartman scores. Plymouth. Tons of pressure, and finally they get rewarded. Ryan Hartman has the Whalers on the board. They're down four to one. And just when you think the Whalers are dead for rights. The power play ends. They've got nothing to show for it, but they continue to forge forward and finally get an opportunity. I mean, you see it from Cucurudo's shot. It's lying on the doorstep. Hartman can't get it. Look at Hartman. He's knocked down. He says, you know what? I'm not going to give up on this play. He goes back to the front of the net, and he gets rewarded with a second chance opportunity off the rebound. Wide open net for Hartman here in his second game in this series, dealing with an upper body issue. We've seen the Whalers in this series. They can score in bunches. Hartman still out there. Gets away from a check behind the net. Hartman's pass. Broken up by Tierney. Comes to the line. Knights another chance to clear. Finally they do. Two minutes to go. In the second period, pucks in front of the Plymouth goal. Ricard Raquel has Garrett Muir speeding to the front of the net. Over to Hartman. Hartman to Muir. So much a save. The rebound gets right back out in front and chopped down the ice by the Knights. And again, the Knights will ice the puck. They'll take the whistle to relieve this pressure that Plymouth is putting on. RJ, you wonder about this Plymouth Whalers team. They don't get talked about much, but who are these guys? And you wonder if they have the ability to score. Well, let's check it out. Mason, Raquel, and Wilson, all first-round National Hockey League picks. Eight other players have been drafted, starting with Trocek in the second round and moving down the list. And then you've got Ryan Hartman, who just scored, who's projected to go in the first round this year. So this team is not to be taken lightly. Stephen Mason 
Moves it to Kirk Garuto. He'll loft that into the corner. Crow checks the first man to it. Mason tried to shovel it in front. Scott Arrington gets it to the line, and Knights are back out into the neutral zone. Mason's pass right to Trocek. Harrington breaks up another one. Tom Wilson a shot and Stolarz, he squeezes it and gets a face off. And you see Mike Vellucci go back to this top line of Wilson, Trocek and Mason to try and get on the board at least once more. And some of that confidence they were looking for. I watched the bench after the Hartman goal and they were all up and excited and really I think strongly feel especially the way this series has gone that they still feel like they have a chance to come back in this game and a goal here in the final minute 20 of this frame would go a long way in doing that. You talked about it earlier Sam in game three they were down three goals in the third period and came back to take the lead with four unanswered in, in about an eight minute stretch and then things started to go sideways after that ended up losing that game six four but there should be some confidence gleaned from that ability to score and score quickly. Minute 20 to go here in the second period. Plymouth controls off the face off. Sebastian Uvira behind the net. Mitchell Hurd tries to get it in front. Stolars is down the puck. Back in the corner, Uvira has it for Plymouth. Cole Horvath squeezes Uvira up against the board. Zach Lorenz, he has Oli Matta on his back. And Seth Griffith hooks it past Kirk Caruto, but Kirk Caruto a good fight to make sure that Griffith didn't break away. That yeah, good strength shown there by Kirk Caruto. 45 seconds to go in the period. Connor Carrick. You better hurry. Ryan Rupert staying right with him. Carrick's in the line. Rivera, his backhander goes through the top of the crease. Rivera again. That's in front of the net. Carrick spins, shoots, scores, saves, Stolars. A huge save by Anthony Stolars late in the period. Stolars really good with his hands. We've seen several blocker saves in this game, but the glove. Equally as good and Tarek tries to utilize the element of surprise a spin and fire but you can see Stolars has a very good clean look at that excellent camera work to show you that that lane was unimpeded by any whalers in front and so Stolars with that clean look able to make the stop. What a reaction by Tarek the frustration off the face off he's got a lane to the net. Who else Scott Harrington got down and put an end to that attempt. Gomi. Off the glass, sends it into the Plymouth zone. Won't be icing. Ten seconds to go now in the second period. Stolars has to stay in his net. Tommy Hughes goes to the corner against Hartman. Trochek looking for a loose puck. And Tommy Hughes able to kill off the final few seconds of the period. And the London Knights, they score two, but Plymouth might be able to take just a little bit of momentum with that late goal from Ryan Hartman. Absolutely essential to get on the board here and just give them a little something to hang on to moving into the final 20. The London Knights 20 minutes away from becoming a Western Conference champions. They're up four to one but Plymouth will try to build on a big push late in that second period. Should be an interesting third ahead. Yeah, and a really good push, I thought, from Plymouth in that last five minutes. Uh, that could have been more than just one goal, but there's no question they needed something to hang on to here for the final 20. And now if you're head coach Mike Vellucci, you say, hey, let's just go empty the tank. Well, it should be a fun final 20 minutes. We'll see if Plymouth can pour it on. The play of the period is brought to you by the Steak Chili Saves for Success program, where saves made resulted in contributions of $30,000 to minor hockey teams. Go to steakchili.ca to see the winners. A lot of elements in this goal. You see the workmanlike effort by London in the corner, and then you see Ole Mata with the smarts to realize that he can go down and pick up that loose puck. He gets it to Horvat, who's in a perfect area to go up top on Nadelkovic and pick up the goal. Before we start the second, let's go down to Rob Falls with a man who's had a pretty big game so far tonight. See ever Alex Broadhurst with two goals and an assist. You had a very good, strong effort tonight. What's it going to take in the final 20? Yeah, I mean the toughest thing in on hockey is the end of, end of team season. So uh, we got to come out just as hard as the first and second, and and we know they're going to come out hard too. So we got to outwork them. No, you, they came out with a lot of energy at the start of the first period. I imagine you expect that here in the third. How do you counter that? 
Um, I mean, the crowd the crowd helps us out a lot. I mean, when uh, when the crowd gets going, our energy level gets higher, and uh, everyone's enjoying having fun and, and playing hard. So that's what we're going to do. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Right now, looking for a strong third period, ready to go with a three-goal lead. By the way, Dylan Hunter is back on the bench. He took five stitches at his eyebrow, two below the eye, and he looked at me and he says, that's what I get for yelling at one of my players and not watching where the puck was. He also said it's a long time since he picked up stitches. <laughs> well, he's a hunter. You knew he'd be back. Yeah, I mean, he's probably looking for Paulie right now, the cup man. There he goes. <laughs> good Paulie. Well, that's good. It's a good sample for the players, too. Coach comes back. <laughs> Uh, former teammate in the 2005 Master Card Memorial Cup champion team Danny Sabret up here in the press box uh, at the intermission. He said he went down to talk to Dylan and said, nah, maybe I'll wait till later. Well, this is it for the Plymouth Whalers. Their season's on the line. Game six. They need to try to force it. Here in game five, they have to win to get to that game six. It's the Western Conference Championship. Knights lead the series. Three games to one. They lead this game. Four to one. Broadhurst drops it off for Domi. Domi's had four points tonight. And the puck goes right on. And Nadelkovich will hang on to get the whistle. Domi down on his can once again. And this line has been really good with Griffith and Broadhurst. And Broadhurst is an interesting story. A seventh round pick in the 2011 draft by the Chicago Blackhawks. Spent the last couple of seasons in the USHL, but was property of the Knights. And so when he too, like Anthony Stolarz, was committed to the University of Nebraska Omaha, both gave up their scholarships to come play here in London. And the Knights are happy to have them both. I want to thank all our viewers across Canada on Sportsnet and welcome our U.S. viewers watching us on Comcast tonight. Tommy Hughes inside his own zone, recently signed by the New York Rangers. And Luca Percorito, he's being four-check, had some reinforcements, and Vince Trocek goes the other way. Trocek drops it off. Mason can't get a shot away. Bo Horvat bothered him just enough. RJ, you're welcoming those viewers. If you have not been familiar with this series, you might want to stick around. What looks like a surefire 4 1 lead. No lead has been safe throughout the course of this series, and momentum changes have come at the drop of a dime, and you'd expect that here in the third as well. The team that won the last three games trailed at some point in those games. So comebacks are the norm. To center, Ellie can't get it in deep. Sebastian Uvira takes over. Ryan Rupert does a flyby. Uvira starts out for Plymouth. Cross ice pass. Crombean doesn't handle it clean, and Dakota Mermis retrieves it in his own zone, puts it off the glass, and that won't get it. Crombean kept it in a couple of times. Will that lead to something? Well, it's behind the net. It's on top of the net. Knight's trying to freeze it, and only Mata. Did track it down. I don't know if Stolarz knew it was on top of his net, but his defenseman did. And that's all that counts is the stoppage. And you look at Dale Hunter and the London Knights just trying to hang on here. One thing familiar with the Knights game is that they have no issues trapping whatsoever. You see Rupert up top, but you don't see any other green jerseys until we extend that lens a little bit. And then four jerseys in that neutral zone. What happens? Puck gets dumped in. No one there for Plymouth to retrieve it. And like a ping pong, the Knights have no issue whatsoever with icing the puck. They're very confident in their centermen to be able to win draws with Tierney, with Horvat. And so if icing is an issue, not a problem with this 4-1 lead. Off the face off, Hartman tried to get a shot through. It was blocked by the Knights. That's not clear. Raquel tried to stick handle, but Tommy Hughes pins him up against the boards. Tierney gets it ahead to Domi, slashes at it, and it comes out to center. He's by himself on this rush. Looking good, too. Finally, Mears takes it from him. Pass to Hartman. He has to wait for it. Hits it on one hop. Domi at the line. Gets it out. This won't be icy. Connor Carrick. Fifth round pick of the Washington Capitals. Put up a lot of points in this postseason. That one trickles down to Stolarz. Plays it on his backhand. Raquel picks that off. Ron Hurst has it now. Now the 
Pittsburgh's Brad Hurst. Didn't get past a hip check from Hartman. Keeps on trucking. Them. Hartman's even knocking his own players down. Just wants the puck. Tom Wilson to throw check. Throw check behind the net. Vince throw check just two points in this series. That one's knuckled to the corner. Another very a chance to clear, and he makes no mistake. Play is whistled down. A boarding penalty coming up. And Tom Wilson's heading to the penalty box, much to the delight of the crowd at Budweiser Gardens. And Wilson best just get off the ice here. He may not like the call, but he can ill afford to get anything extra. And he is a marked man. Has been throughout the course of his career just because he's so big. And because he skates so well, because he's a first round pick, all of those things put him on the radar every time he's out in the X. There's no light hits when Tom Wilson comes. Oh, he plays for Keats. Knights have been good on the power play. Two for four. Their fifth opportunity. Holy matter. He's the quarterback of this power play. Lone defenseman out there in this first unit for the Knights. Max Dolman, he zips into the Plymouth zone. Quick move. Big save by Nedeljkovic. That was a tough shot. Cole Horvath behind the net. Shot from Broders, kind of golfed at it and caught by Alex Nedeljkovic. Well, Domi again showing off his wares, and that's one of his signature moves. It makes it, he makes it look like with the angle of the stick that he's going to take it outside, but instead he drags it back and shoots it, and that element of surprise is definitely defeated more than one goalie in the Ontario Hockey League through the course of this season. Off the face off, Tierney a great chance. That was stopped by Nedeljkovic. Knights on the power play, and a second effort by Trocek gets that puck out, and he needs a change. Nikita Zadorov, he's made his mark in this game. A couple of big hits, had a scrap. Moves it down low to Kyle Plantzer. Plantzer, the rookie from Waterloo. Over to Tierney, back to Zadorov, return feed. Tierney had to chase after it. Raquel looking for a shorthanded break. Zadorov made sure that didn't happen. Chris Tierney. Works his way inside the Plymouth zone. Then he sets up shot. Latzer's pass goes to Rupert. Down low. Tierney has it. Tierney looking for someone. Opens the door. Ives calling for it. And it gets to him. Latzer. Zadorov. Zadorov walks in. Snapshot. Blocker to side by Nedeljkovic. Comes back in front. And the Whalers are able to clear the zone with... No time left on the penalty to Tom Wilson. The Whalers, they had to kill that one off, and they did. They're still down by just three. Lancer chases it inside the offensive zone, and it's offside on London. Wilson came into this game with six goals in the series, six of the 13 to the point when the series started. And there are times when he plays on the edge, and there are times when he goes above and beyond it. When he plays right on that edge, he is one of the most effective players in the league. But when he crosses that line and takes himself out of the play, and we've seen that on a couple of occasions tonight, it's rendered ineffective because he's simply not on the ice. Well, time is the enemy of the Whalers. They've got to get this offense clicking. Just over 14 minutes to go in the third. They're down by three. The Knights, we might see a lot of this. They'll clear it down. They'll ice it. In the OHL, you can change on the icings. They'll take face-offs. They don't mind. Yeah, it's a, it, it'll be a bit of a ping-pong match here, and Mike Belucci's team is going to have to fight through that because London will get in that trap, four guys in the neutral zone, but Blunt, Plymouth will dump in the puck, and London will say, yeah, we don't care. We'll just simply ice the puck again and look for the reset. So your sentiment for Plymouth are going to be really key here. Vincent Trocek won 25 of 30 draws in game number four. Mitchell Hurd's out there now. They're going to need to win a lot more face-offs to negate some of the icings by London. And Ryan Rupert came straight off the bench to take that face off and won it. Knights can't get the puck out though. Matt Mistily 
34 goal scorer in the regular season. Carrick shot, and that's off the stick of Tyler Ferry. Goes way up and out of play. 13.49 to go here in the third period. Knights are up by three. Don't miss the deer season sales event at your local John Deere dealer and save on gators, compact tractors, and more. Visit your local John Deere dealership today to save. You heard Max Domi tell Damian Cox in our uh, intermission feature that three times a charm, and Max Domi doing everything he can to lead his London Knights back to the Mastercard Memorial Cup and getting by the Plymouth Whalers is step number one in that climb and he has been so effective in this game he's used his speed he's used his quick stick four points in on all four of the london knights goals here leading that four and three and dropping it off to broadhurst it's been a sensational night for max Stoneman. the crowd is rocking at budweiser gardens here in london they want to see their knights win a second consecutive western conference championship Chance to do it in five games. In the driver's seat in this one. Up by three. Plymouth trying to get a late one. It's loose. Hartman's in front. It's just going to clear the zone. Plymouth's had their chances. Looking a lot like the, the Whalers did at the end of that second period when they had a huge push. That dump in by Raquel. That didn't hit anything. It went out of play. So now the faceoff will come just outside the Whalers line. Being as big as he is, Stolarz has the definite advantage that when he goes down, he still covers a large portion of the net. He is extremely quick down low, and you see him recover there with no harm done. 34 saves for the Philadelphia Flyers second rounder. Face off win for the Knights. They fire it in. There's a bad hop off a of stanchion. Red fine by John Luca Cricaruto. Was dumped into the night zone. Scott Harrington takes a look over both shoulders. Rattles it right back up to the neutral zone. Two on one for the Knights. Bo Horvath has Seth Griffith. They have been held and stopped by Nadelkovic. Another chance. Horvath just missed. What a well executed two on one. And that might have iced it. Huge stop by Nadelkovic. So many questions from Mike Bellucci as to whether or not he'd go to Matt Mahalik, who ended game number four, or go back to the 17-year-old Nadelkovic. And you know, on the four goals we've seen here tonight, he hasn't had the chance on three of them. Interesting play there where Seth Griffith tried to move Tyler Ferry, his teammate's stick ahead, and almost broke up the play for the Whalers. That might have wound up as a penalty had it done so as far as breaking up the play goes. Mitchell Hurd gets it to do Vera. Stolarz behind his net. He's checked. He's out of position. Pucks kicked out, and it goes right to Remy Alley. You talked about the puck luck earlier, Sam, and it's continuing to go the night's way. Yeah, it's getting nasty down there now. I mean, Hurd and Zadorov almost got into it again. Zadorov didn't want any part of it. I think he's been told by both the Hunter brothers, hey, stay out of the fighting realm and just stay on the back end and hold down the fort. Three goal lead. Don't do anything silly. There's Zadora. Pass ahead to Platzer. It's Tierney. He had some speed. Gets through the neutral zone. Limit the other way. Shot stopped by Stolarz. Carrick jumping into the play. Now he's caught. Max Domi. He's zipping in one-on-one. -on -one. Catching up. On the far side was Tierney. And then he's crunched behind the play. No penalty. Muir's gets it from the scores. Garen Muir's. A beautiful goal for Plymouth. And with 10.51 to go, the Whalers are within two. Don't go away, folks. That's all I'm going to say. Just don't go away. Mirrors, like he got shot out of a cannon. 
You see the opportunity for Domi. Once that's blocked by McDonald, watch how quickly Hartman gets it up ice. And Muir's forget it. He turns the corner and he is gone. One of the few times you'll see Tommy Hughes beat. And an excellent, excellent play here to go up top to the forehand, beating Stolars. You know, Plymouth was due for one of those with all the pressure they've had here in the first nine minutes and nine seconds of this third period. Muir's a fifth round pick of the Colorado Avalanche. 32 goals during the regular season is seventh of the playoffs. There's some fight left in the Whalers. Approaching the midway point of the third period. Boy, oh boy, this, it, it, you know, it's going to turn into river hockey because Plymouth has to throw everything it can at, at Dale Hunter and the Knights. And the Knights have no problem icing the puck, but they also have no problem transitioning. I mean, that's their game. So often, the Knights get criticized for playing a trap game, but to me, it's more of a trap and transition game, and that can become very exciting, especially when a team is fighting for its playoff life. Seth Griffith inside the Plymouth zone. Up comes in front of Hogan, and it just trickles past the far side. Scott Harrington so patient with the puck. Quickly ahead, now Griffith. He eludes a check from Trocek, and Harrington's right there to... Fire that puck into the Plymouth end. Stolen along the boards by Horvath. Horvath gets it to Griffin. Griffin wants it right back behind the net. Tom Wilson. He'll wheel out. Moves it ahead to Kirk Arruda. Mason doesn't handle it clean. Harrington takes it from him and moves it outside the night zone. Holy man. He's got some skating room. Three nights over the line. Nick Melissa, he turned 20 a couple of weeks ago. Finds Tom Wilson. Wilson shot off the stick of Tommy Hughes, and that's out of play. There's 9.39 to go here in Game 5, and Garrett Muir's his guaranteed will have an exciting finish. The insurance goal of the game brought to you by your local insurance broker. To score your insurance goal, your best insurance is an insurance broker. Uh, I don't think there's anything in this series that's been insurance, but the 4 nothing goal that led to the biggest lead in this series so far is the broader goal from Domi on the 4-on-3. But hang on to your hats and put on your seat belts. It's 4-2, and we still have about a half a period left to play. Shots are 39-29 for the Plymouth Whalers. They need to win this game. It's game five of the Western Conference Championships. Knights lead the series three games to one. Missed a lead from a sharp angle. That didn't work out. Mitchell Hurd, he's property of the Colorado Avalanche. Uvira, he's not going to be denied. He gets the puck. Back to Carrick, some good stick handling. That hit traffic in front of the net, didn't get to the goal. Carrick, a spin move inside his own line. Head up to center. Doesn't get it deep. Tommy Hughes sends it right back into the Whalers' head. Carrick is up as a fourth forward. <laughs> After that rush and inability to get the puck in, he just stayed in the neutral zone. Why not? They need goals. Hurd stick handles his way in. The shot went off. Tommy Hughes stick harmlessly to the corner. Hurd runs into his own man, Uvira, and again the Knights content just to clear it outside their zone. Carrick's way up by the offensive blue line. Seth Griffith got off the bench, got over there to make sure he didn't go in for a dangerous rush. Ricard Raquel, that wasn't easy entering the zone. Pretty good move by Raquel, can't get a shot. Carrick might. Backhand to Nelly score! The Whalers score again. Carrick throw it in front of the net, it hits something. And Plymouth is within one with 8.18 to go. Well, Carrick had about a 12-minute shift as the fourth forward, and it finally pays off because he gets possession of the puck, and when you think he runs out of real estate, a nifty move at the line by Carrick allows him to take it towards the goal. And Raquel, who does a nice job getting in over the line, goes to the front of the net. You'll see Carrick, nifty move right here, front of the net. Raquel is there, and I think it goes off of Raquel's stick and in. Excellent move by Carrick, who I've really come to like over the course of this series. He has been brilliant for Plymouth. Carrick 
Fall and Park, Illinois. Same place as Alex Broadhurst. Both guys have had great games tonight in Game 5 of the Western Conference Championship. On the crowd a little uneasy now at Budweiser Gardens. A 4-0 lead is comfortable. 4-3, not so much. Stephen Mason. He tried to fire all the momentum with the Whalers. Seth Griffin trying to change that. Got it in front. Barry couldn't convert. And sends it down low to Ferry. Kirk Lodo pins him up against the boards. Griffin gets it to the line. It gets past Ole Matta, and he'll have to retreat. Nothing else. You should have a lot of fun watching the final seven and a half minutes of this third period. And Matta. Ices it so the Knights will have a face off deep in their own zone. Here's Rob Falls. Guys, a pretty big event coming up this weekend. Semifinals of the Barcelona Open on play. Milos Raonic will face Rafael Nadal live 10 Eastern on Sportsnet 1. And immediately following that semifinal, Cole Schreiber against Almagro still on Sportsnet 1. And it leads to the final live 10 Eastern on Sunday on the main Sportsnet channels. Knights can't get it out. And it hits a glove of one of the Whaler players, and that will be a glove pass, and the faceoff will come outside. Hurd's been good in the faceoff circle for Plymouth here. He's taking most of the important draws now when Trocek was the guy to do it in game number four. Two minutes and 33 seconds apart here in the third. And remember that four goal, eight minute out first earlier in the series in game number three. So there's no doubt this Plymouth team has the ability to strike and strike quickly. Can't help but think of what Mike Bellucci said before the game. Said he doesn't know what the outcome will be, but he knows his team is going to fight tooth and nail right until that final buzzer. And they've done exactly that. When they were down 4 nothing, they could have rolled over. They haven't. Muir's, he's had a big goal in this game. Knights. A little bit sloppy, but got the puck up. Connor Carey. There's a good delay to wait for his teammates to get onside. Trying to slide it through to Hartman. Hartman moves it back to the line. Muir's got there in time. Hartman shovels it in front, but it's blocked by Mermis. Mermis wraps it around the boards, and that will go down into the Plymouth zone. And another icing. Charge to London. Well, we showed you what we thought might have been the insurance goal, the Broadhurst fourth goal to give London a 4 nothing lead. But Hartman, towards the end of the second period, gets the Whalers on the board, followed up by Mears, and then two minutes and 33 seconds later, Ricard Raquel in front of the net off the Connor Carrick backhand and has put the Whalers to within one. As of right now, they credited the goal to Connor Carrick, but I think you're right, Sam. I think it did hit Raquel in front. Never check with me on those. <laughs> they should. You'd think they would have learned by now. My bulbs are pretty good. London can't get it out again. Something they hadn't had trouble doing earlier in this game. All of a sudden, the callers get a little tighter. Kirk Aruno in front of his own Ali. He missed the net. Oh, what a chance that was. Ellie steals again, spins and fires, and Alex Nedeljkovic. You think about those saves he made when it was four to nothing. He's kept his team in it, made battle back for him. Uvira through center. Mitchell Hurd. That shot locks over the net. Bounces around in the night zone. Griffith off the glass. Kept in for a moment by Mistily. Some pretty good eye hand coordination to convert that effort. Vince Trocek. He's the guy you want to see on the ice if you're a Plymouth Whalers fan. Connor Carrick. Rifles it in. Stolarz is out of his neck. Plays it along the boards. That one's knocked down by Tom Wilson, but Bo Horvat steals. Flips it ahead. It's a two on one. Griffith has Barry going to that. Griffith locks in, and that was off the post of the crossbar. Right back the other way, it's Tom Wilson, one on five. He's got nobody with him. Wilson able to buy some time. Now the reinforcements have arrived. Kirk Garuto, top of the circle, makes a spin move. Barry staying right with him. He wasn't fooled. Kirk Garuto now. Snaps a shot, scores! 
Whalers, can you believe it? The Plymouth Whalers have scored four unanswered and have tied it. Oh boy. Momentum changes, scraps, fines, suspensions, great goals, some not so good, excellent saves. This series has seen it all. This game has become a complete circus. 4 nothing, London. And then that Hartman goal really, I felt, gave Plymouth confidence. And Coop Ruto makes a great play here. He takes this puck down low. He recognizes there's nothing. He curls back up towards the middle of the ice. And as soon as he finds a lane, he's able to sneak it through and pick up the game-tying goal. Can you believe what we're seeing? Well, Dale Hunter's pointing. I believe he wants them to go upstairs and take a look at this. And they do on most goals anyway. But I think what Dale Hunter is looking for, if there was a high stick in front of the net, Scott Oakman and Sean Reed, it'll be Sean Reed, the official, who takes the phone here as they have this conversation with the off-ice officials upstairs. And I think they want to see if the Cucurito shot was deflected yeah, by goal. any Plymouth stick up front. Thank you. Well, we were able to listen into the audio, and that review didn't take very long. Yep. It is a good goal. What happens here, RJ, and in the Ontario Hockey League specifically, you every single goal goes up for review and so usually it's just a quick check if there's nothing you know worrisome at all and i think that's what they were looking for just to make sure that there wasn't a high stick by nason in front well we've seen this before london knights blow a lead plymouth comes back but can plymouth finish the job and get the win and force a game six Old new ball game now. Just over four minutes to go. Here come the Knights. It's a three on two. Broadhurst drops it off for Domi. Domi, Broadhurst. He directs it just wide. Behind the net, Domi gets it in front. Got the side by Austin Levi. And now Plymouth takes a page of the Knights book and will just get the whistle, send it down the ice. Icing just fine with them. Oh, what a push by Plymouth. Down 4 nothing. They've tied it with 3.54 to go. Here's the save of the game brought to you by MasterCard. Proud to sponsor the MasterCard Memorial Cup, North America's toughest championship. Well, RJ, you pointed out Alex Ndalkovic has made some really good saves up 4 nothing, And this one on Placer might be the biggest of all. Probably the best opportunity for London to increase that lead. And I think at that point would have salted this game away. But Nadelkovic, who has rebounded from being pulled on four goals and 11 shots in game four, has come back and had a strong game, making the important saves when he's needed to for Plymouth. Face-off win for the Knights. Cole Horvath. Tried to find Griffith. Picked off by Krochekel on the boards. Comes to Tommy Hughes. He lofted that near the net. It was going to miss, but can't take any chances now. And Alex Nedeljkovic hangs on. And that's the thing about Nedeljkovic. I mean, he came into this year and no way he thought he'd get an opportunity to play with Matt Mahalik, the Carolina draft pick, as the starter. But did, Mahalik didn't get off to a particularly good start. And so in February, Mike Bellucci said, Hey, I'm just going to give the kid a try, and it's worked out well. 19-2, 1-1 in the regular season. Tom Wilson coming in, and Stefan Nason just couldn't stay onside. Yeah, and see, and this is where the London Knights feel that they might be able to take advantage of something, and this is where Tom Wilson has to keep his cool. He is way more important on the ice for Plymouth than he is trying to exert any physical pre presence over Scott Harrington or anyone else on the London Knights for that matter. And you see Harrington just trying to goad Wilson into a penalty there. That's a veteran move by the London captain, but Wilson not fighting this time around. Shots are 41-30 in favor of Plymouth. 3.35 to go in the third period. Knights seem to be in control, up 4-0. Plymouth, they don't want their season to end tonight. All in front, Nedeljkovic, calm and cool. Just turned 17. A lot of pressure on that young man now. Big four check for Plymouth. Raquel comes up with a puck. Stolen by Remy Allen. He has Platzer with him. Matt is in on this rush, too. Rupert sounds well. Quick passing, but nothing got to the net except for Ellie, and the net is off, and that's the reason for the whistle. Archie, you talked earlier in the game about the 
National Hockey League final central scouting rankings coming out and uh, Remy Ali one of those guys on a list of eight for the London Knights. Look at Zdorov, Horvat and Domi as potential first round picks and then Ellie up to 71 Kyle Platzer at 110. Miles Liberati who we have not seen in this game at 150 Jake Patterson the backup goaltender for London ranked 20th as far as North American goaltenders are concerned so this snowball just keeps on rolling and your call at the end of last year's MasterCard Memorial Cup was great the London Knights should be good again next year you were right on the money. They might be better than they were last year and they might be even better next year. Yeah isn't that something to think that you keep that ball rolling. Mitchell Hurd. Some pro experience this season with Lake Erie in the American Hockey League. Hurd has it now. He's out there with Matt Mistel. Tommy Hughes takes a hit from Hurd. Controls along the boards though. Moves it ahead. Alex Broadhurst takes his time. Sends it into Max Domi. Domi in front. Turney spins. Nobody there for the Knights. Austin Levi. He's looking for a little bit of help. The big defenseman made a pretty good move. Bonus intercepts, and there's Scott Harrington behind his own goal. The Knights captain. Tough to get him flustered. Moves it to Broadhurst. Mark pass. Might have been more of a shot. It touched the ice. Vince Trocek. Harrington will try to stay close to him. Trocek's been kept in check. Yet the Plymouth Whalers have been able to tie this game. One assist for Trocek in this game. Down to a minute 35 to go in the third. Marisa able to keep it in. Tom Wilson sends it down to Trocek. Wilson comes up with it. Wilson. There's Tommy Hughes hanging on. Wilson still controls. Wilson will try the other way. Instead drops it off for Trocek. Trocek's pass. There's an open man over there. It's Curtis Crombie. Crombie walks the line. Dumps it in. Stolarz holds his ground. His defenseman only Mata comes up with it. Slides it ahead. Tyler Ferry at center. To Seth Griffin. One on four. Doesn't get it deep. It's okay. You want the puck outside of the blue lines. If you're both teams, you want it in deep. Raquel. That shot blocked by Scott Harrington. Under a minute to go here in the third. Max Domi, he's got a step. Domi walks in, just put it high. Wouldn't that have been something? Capping off his big night, he has four points on the night so far. Could have blown the lid right off this building. Brian Hartman. His pass picked off by Zadorov. Gets to the Plymouth line. Dumped right back to Raquel. Has to let that puck settle. Teammates went offside. Maddow will try to take advantage. Down to 20 seconds to go here in the third. Overtime is looming here in game five of the Western Conference Final. That's sent out of play. The crowd says it's a penalty. The referee says nope. It hit something before it went out. Just a face off inside Plymouth zone is all that will result. A yeah, good job by the officials veteran Sean Reed and Scott Oakman looking after the refereeing duties and off a domey stick and out it goes. But I like the conference there by all the officials to get together. Make sure you make the call right. Don't be influenced by this 9046 crowd here at the Budweiser Gardens. Well they must have said it went off the glass and out because the face off staying deep in the Plymouth zone 14 seconds to go. This is a big face off. Pro check against Rupert. Rupert wins. Mermis off the draw. Can't get a shot to the net. Sends it in deep. Domi's back there. Bumps with Kirk Arreto. Comes in front. Mermis. Meta a shot. That's why. Comes in front. Novakovic gets a left pad on it. And the final seconds tick away. There's the buzzer. 60 minutes will not decide game five. We will go to overtime. There's two guys standing in this booth who knew exactly what was going to happen here tonight. Although when it was four nothing I didn't think it was going to get there but it surely did and here's how close it was to Domi ending it right on the doorstep and Delkovich the 17 year old unflappable. Give the Plymouth Whalers a ton of credit down four nothing. They even it up at four. And their season is not done. Overtime is on the horizon. The Knights 
and the Plymouth Whalers in Game 5 of the Western Conference Championship. Well, right now, there is the story of the game. Kirk Arudo with the goal to tie things up. The Knights had a 4 nothing lead in this game and is now 4-4 heading into overtime. The London Knights got to the final of the MasterCard Memorial Cup one year ago in 2005 as hosts. They were named champions. And the man who was able to hoist that MasterCard Memorial Cup stands next to me and Danny Savrette. And Dan, you've come back. You've been a big part of supporting this team. And now here it is another stressful situation. I know it's exactly there's a bunch of us from that Memorial Cup team that come back every summer and, and uh, spend the summer here in London. We actually a group of us went to uh, Schwinnigan for the Memorial Cup last year. And unfortunately the Knights lost but uh, hopefully they can pull through here in overtime and uh, we'll make a trip up to Saskatoon. Now you take a look at this team and you watch their progress. The, the Hunters have done a remarkable job of being able to let's say when the shelves get empty restock and keep getting players and turning them over and and, and producing some fabulous players and you know firsthand what it's like to to play for these guys exactly they're great coaches I mean uh, they bring the best out of you uh, every game and every practice and uh, you, you can see all the guys budding now in the NHL uh, all the stars that have come through the nice organization and uh, under the the realm of the hunters so they do a real good job of uh, producing players and developing them onto the next level. What do you remember most about 05? Is it the, the one particular game? Is it the parade afterwards? What do you remember? I mean, everything happened so fast. We had a lot of fun that year. Uh, obviously, to start the year uh, on a on a streak like that, um, we actually lost it when we were at uh, World Juniors. So I think that was a pretty uh, memorable time for me, being at World Juniors with the with the Team Canada guys and. Uh, I remember them reading the score off that we had lost and everyone was sort of giving it to us on the team. But uh, I mean we we had a real good year uh, a lot of fun and uh, a year I'll never forget. As you mentioned you like to come back you be able to talk to these young players. What do you try to share with them about this opportunity that they have right now. Just to have fun. I mean uh, that's what you want to do. You want to have fun and play a game right. You're playing a game hopefully for a living and um, just going out there and having fun and being confident. And, uh, hopefully Dale is still going to be confident this uh, this upcoming overtime and uh, hopefully they'll come out on the right side of the, the scoreboard. Now you've been there when he's given that message. Uh, you know, I've known Dale for a long time. He's not a man of many words when he goes in to give the the, the team some pep talk. Is it very quick succinct right to the point. It, exactly. It's right to the point. I mean most of the time you don't really have to hear from a coach. You know what what you have to do if you have to play better or uh, what's that stand so. Uh, you know he's a, like I said he's a real good coach and uh, I'm sure the, the guys will know what they're going to have to do when they come out here. All right if you were a wagering person who would you wager on in the uh, for maybe the overtime winner. Uh, I like Tierney he's been skating real well. Um, you know I liked him throughout the whole game. Uh, that whole line's been playing real well and uh, if I had to put money on I would go with him. All right there we have our first prediction. Dan thanks very much for doing this. Thanks very much Rob. Danny Savrat a great part of the legacy of the London Knights. His name is on the MasterCard Memorial Cup as champions and the Knights want another opportunity. Well pretty good Eastern and Western Conference Finals here in the OHL. Barry was in the same boat as London coming into the night. A 3-1 series lead. A chance to polish off Belleville but the Bulls. They have forced the game six. Yeah, and that's after Barry scored first with Kamara and then a couple of goals by Klein to wrap things up. And they're headed for game six, the, the Colts and the Bulls. Now the difference there is Belleville had home ice to force a game six. Plymouth is on the road trying to force a game six. Not easy to win in this building. They've done it once in this series. Double overtime in game two. And there's the two goaltenders, they've been busy. Alex Nedeljkovic, 1996 born, just turned 17 in January. Ohio native, he's a rookie this year. And Anthony Stolarz, second round pick of the Philadelphia Flyers, New Jersey native, has been rock solid for the Knights. Game five of the Western Conference Championship. We're in overtime now. If the Knights win, it's done. They win the Wayne Gretzky Trophy. They're Western Conference champions. If Plymouth wins, we'll go to a game six. Next over, he scores! Oh, didn't take long! What a night for Max Domi! Five points! Knights win! They're Western Conference champions! Well, if you're a 
for one of the 9,046. He didn't have time to get a cold one. And the Whalers, after all that fight back, the celebration by Cucuruto to tie this thing up and look for new life in overtime. And the season ends just 20 seconds into the extra frame. A dream night for Max Domi. Two goals, three assists, in on all five of the night's goals. 20 seconds into overtime. And you see Nadalkovic there, he steers it away from Kukuruto. And once that happens, that allows Domi to maintain possession. Tierney gets it out front. And Domi, with that good shot and his ability to elevate the puck quickly, puts an end to it in what no doubt was a career night for Max Domi. Well, the 18-year-old from Toronto threw his team on his back tonight. The Knights are moving on to the OHL Championship. They end the Plymouth Whalers season. The Western Conference Championship goes five games. Five points for Max Domi, and the Knights are back where they want to be. A chance to repeat as Ontario Hockey League champions, and they'll try to punch their ticket to Saskatoon for the MasterCard Memorial Cup. And the traditional handshakes now as both teams line up. London native Colin McDonald leading the way for the Plymouth Whalers. And you know, the Whalers, you you didn't have time to settle in on your bench to get ready for anything. It, it, it ended that quickly. And boy, oh boy, this is not a series that deserved to end in five games. The two teams were that evenly matched. And Plymouth used everything it had left in the tank to come back to score four and answer to tie it. And before they could blink in overtime, it's over. That's a great point. This is a five game series that felt like about eight for these two teams. A double overtime game, every game close, leads weren't safe. Two top notch teams in the Ontario Hockey League. Top two seeds in the Western Conference. Anthony Stolarz didn't play a full season, he was brought in, and he has really solidified the one position that some critics thought was a weakness on the London Knights. And that was goaltending, but Stolarz has turned that into a strength. Well, you look at Joe Stefan and, and Mike Bellucci, and to think that their team had the resilience to come back from that four goal deficit and to watch it all go away in 20 seconds has got to be a tough, tough pill to swallow. A great season for Mike Bellucci and the Plymouth Whalers. 93 points, second seed in the Western Conference. Vince Trocek, a guy who led the league in scoring. What a great future for their young goaltender, Alex Nedeljkovic. And the London Knights are Western Conference champs. This overtime. Brought to you by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. Well, what a night for the London Knights. They wanted to play a little overtime just to make Max Domi's night a little bit more dramatic. He's standing by with Rob Falls. RJ Sammy asked me, can I take my helmet off and put the hat on as Western Conference champions? No problem. What a dream night this was for you. It was tough to see a big lead disappear, but you guys, no quit. Yeah, I know. I mean, Plymouth, unbelievable team, and we had a great series, and obviously uh, it was a rocky road. I mean, a lot of leads and uh, a lot of kind of comebacks, and it was just unbelievably a part of and uh, they're a great hockey team. What was the discussion during the overtime intermission? Uh, what was your feeling as a team after having a forward nothing lead and watching it disappear? Just that, uh, I mean, you, you can't dwell on the past. Obviously, we didn't want to give up that lead, but uh, can't do anything about it now. And uh, it was one shot, I mean, uh, to make it to the, to the league finals. And that's how we ended it, and uh, we're pretty happy with it. You guys came out energy. You looked very, very serious coming on the ice for that overtime, and you guys went right to the net. Yeah, I know, exactly. We, uh, 
I mean, we had to get to the net, and uh, we had a game plan, and we just executed it properly, and uh, it was awesome. Max, you've been through this before. You know what it takes. You still have another step because you want to win the Ontario Hockey League and make your appearance back in Saskatoon. Yeah, I know. I mean, we're still very far from where we want to get here. I mean, uh, obviously, we want to get back to where we were last year, and we're one step closer now. Congratulations on this. Uh, enjoy your rest. Still lots of work. Thank you very much. Max Domi with five points tonight, including the overtime winner. The ice wasn't even dry in OT before Domi ended it. And the Knights will wait for either Barry or Belleville in the Ontario Hockey League Championship. RJ, Sam? Yeah, what a night for Max Domi. 25 points in this postseason in 14 games. Led the team in scoring during the regular season. Leads them here in the postseason. And the Knights are waiting to get that. The Wayne Gretzky Trophy as Western Conference champions. The Knights with their Western Conference champion hats. One step closer to the ultimate prize, and that's a MasterCard Memorial Cup. Get the traditional team photo, even those not in the lineup, injured or otherwise. All the support staff, coaching staff, and even Dylan Rocky Balboa Hunter. <laughs> He's got eight new friends around his eye after taking a puck from the bench in the first period. You can see Nick Zadorov right there beside Anthony Stolarz. He had a big game, big hits, a fight. He's one of the characters on the team. No doubt that they'll be looking right away at the scoreboard to see that the Belleville Bulls have been able to extend that series against Barry, and that's exactly what the Knights are looking for now. They'd love to see that one go seven. The Rogers Western Conference Championship Trophy. The Wayne Gretzky Trophy is named in honor of Wayne Gretzky, one of the Ontario Hockey League's most esteemed graduates. At this time, we would like to welcome Mr. Ted Baker, Vice President of the Ontario Hockey League, who will present the Wayne Gretzky Trophy to your captain, number six, Scott Harrington, on behalf of your 2013 Western Conference champion of the night. Now the captain of the night, Scott Harrington, not afraid to touch the Wayne Gretzky Trophy. And he shows it off to the crowd here at Budweiser Gardens. Not many of the 9,046 have left. They're getting accustomed to celebrations here in London. And a team photo is Western Conference champions. Seven out of the last 10 years, the Knights have played for a Western Conference title. We capture it here for the second straight season. And you know, when we were in Edmonton going back about a month ago, RJ, the big slogan around the Oil Kings was unfinished business. And although you got that sense around the London Knights organization, it wasn't quite as brazenly put. And so London has done its part to at least make it to the OHL championship. The London Knights were the number one team during the OHL regular season and they have kept it rolling for 14 games in the postseason. They have made it to the OHL final. They will represent the OHL's Western Conference. Game five didn't go as planned. A 4-0 lead. It seemed like it was in the bag for London. It wasn't so. Plymouth battled back, forced overtime, but just 20 seconds in. Max Tony capped off a dream night. Five points leading the Knights to the victory. London Knights, they are the Western Conference champions.